Hey, what's up? It's your girl Samara, aka Girl from Harlem. And this is Ray Daniels, aka the Culture Referee. And this is the Guy Show. But, but, let's make some noise. Let's make some noise. And, t- yeah. and, and today, and today we have a legend, my a brother, legend. my yeah. friend, one of my favorite people in the world. No bullshit. This this guy had his first hit before he knew who my name was. He <laughs> always spoke and shown love. And as big as he got, and no matter how legendary he got, he's always been the same lovable guy and it's an honor to have him and just because he humble don't mean we not gonna treat him big because he's humble and he's gonna play a real humble but we ain't gonna let him today we got our brother brian michael cox on the show let's yeah. go oh, what up what up what up, what up, what up. Too, so we're gonna get oh, fun in good, this good, good, get good today, good today, man. you know oh. you already know my brother's gonna get good no nah, man i'm, I'm Yo, glad I'm, to be in this beautiful energy man it's appreciate amazing. you coming appreciate you coming Tamir, let's Always get it into it that. I just want to say he got a Yankee hat on. But anyway, um, I've been I've been in the New York kind of state of mind the past couple of weeks. But but the big but thing about B Cox that you gotta understand is that whether he's in Africa, he's in America, mm-hmm. he's in he's, he's always in. loved by the locals. And yeah. the reason why is because he shows love. Yeah, that's like who he that. is. I appreciate that's that. who he is. Yeah. All right, so actually, I'm like I'm I'm a newbie to the city, not that new. But we went out the other day and we went to your party at Red Martini. Well, yeah, on Wednesdays, yeah, me and Keith. The, the, Oh my gosh, let me tell you. Best vibe in the Best city. Best party if in the city. If you guys Appreciate have not y'all. been to Red Martini for their R&B party, you're missing out. Um, we got to come back and bring Keith on, too. By the way, Keith was supposed to be here. He was supposed to be here, but he Keith, was, yeah. you know, Keith had a kid. A lot and like, going you on. Yeah, got you. Yeah, no, you know what but mean? you guys actually have the best party in the city. Yeah. It's, and I'll be honest, it's so big that people don't even call it Red Martini. They call it they call R&B, R&B Wednesday. Right. That's good, R&B Wednesday. You know what's ill, though? What's crazy is how the party even started was, you know, me and Keith... We've been friends for a long time, but we was really, it was a, I was going, I went through a crazy breakup, so I was like seriously depressed, right? And Keith was like, man, bring your ass out. So I was going out every night, every night, and we were going to these parties. This is an era when like trap music was so dense in mm-hmm. Atlanta at every club. Every, it was like not a break at yep. all, right? But I was doing parties like on the east side, like on Ponce, uh, Ponce de Leon and over on that side. Little five points, and we were doing these. I was doing parts at the Groove, and I did a party with Martina McFly called uh, uh, um, Priceless, mm-hmm. and at the L, at L Bar and at basement spots mm-hmm. that you know, may a lot of mainstream, yeah, you know, yeah like, 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 like that, yeah, yeah like, my compadres weren't coming to, <laughs> but I was going hanging out over there, and right. that's you know, that's where I was uh, really my first inter- interactions with the La Renaissance crew, sure, like just I, I would just blend it up. You know what I mean? And I was DJing over there. The work crew really put me in with Wally Sparks and Xavier mm-hmm. Black, Jeremy Alvalon. They, they really put me down. And I remember telling Keith, like, yo, man, I'm doing these R&B parties over here. And Keith, because Keith was like, we need to do an R&B party. And I was like, I don't know how marketable it is because the parties I'm doing are so uh, not what our industry is right yeah. now. You know what I mean? And Keith's like, man, fuck that. We're gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna do it. And then Keith's girl was uh was working at uh uh SL. Yeah. Oh. SL Lounge with Rugs. Good times. And Rugs asked her, like, yo, your boyfriend comes here all the time, talking about Keith. Mm-hmm. Comes all the time and you know, you should have him throw a party. You know what I mean? And she was like, you know what, I'm gonna talk to him about it. And she she talked to Keith about it. And then Keith was like, Well, if I do it, the only person I wanna do it is B Cox. Fire. Oh. Called me and was like, yo, his pitch was, you know, man, you've been down and out. You know, you at you least up. at least we could listen to music we won't listen to. We can get drunk for free. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Keep so smart. Like, 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 we gonna be anyway. We gonna be able to get drunk and free. I'm like, you know what, bro? Let's do it. Yeah. And I think the first night we made like 175 dollars or something like that. But Rugs that first night, Rugs was like, yo, like something. It, even though we only had like maybe you know twelve people there, fifteen people there, he was like, "Yo, this is gonna be big." Exactly. And about a month later, like six weeks later, that shit was on fire. Y'all done moved that's it like crazy. four times. Oh yeah, yeah. And anytime you move a party and it's still pop, like, that's what I'm saying. It's the brand, with you. the brand, yeah. yes, the, the brand. brand. My favorite, my favorite was Medusa for some reason. Mm. I don't know why it was. It felt Medusa smaller was on Thursday. No, when no, Wednesday, Wednesday night. We had they Wednesday started night. at SL. We started out. And then, we and, moved then to, and I didn't really come to SL that much, but yeah. but they started, but SL was bigger. Yeah. Medusa we moved to was smaller. Room. And so it felt like. Yeah, we moved to Gold Room and then, and then, oh, and then Charles big, and then Charles came and got us from Gold Room because Gold mm. Room was a disaster. The deal yeah. we made was not good, but people still kept coming. Yeah. And Charles, who was one of the co owners of Medusa, was always coming and being at the back bar. He's like, man, 
y'all niggas got something here. Right, you yeah. wanted something. And then he was like, man, come to Medusa. Yeah. And, you know, something that we, we, we realized that Go Room was some bullshit. It, and out of that, it's, it's super it's big. Super, it's super it's big. Super but big. I, what, what makes it, what makes it a vibe is it's that it feels very intimate. Mm-hmm. It feels like R&B yeah, party. We, we, weren't tra- like, we weren't trying to make like an EDM yeah. trap thing. You know what I mean? It wasn't, you know, it's very, very specific. Yeah, Medusa. you got you, you, you got to want to come yeah. there. But when I've, everybody I've taken there is like, bro. Yeah. I'm That's the only to thing I want to go. Unmatched. Yeah. Unmatched. Only thing I want to go. But yeah, my no. thing is that, like, you guys were able to kind of create this vibe in a situation where we were having a conversation about is R&B dead. Yeah. So it's like everybody screaming R&B's dead, but you guys have the hottest party in the city playing and only R&B. Keith and I are only, that's all we are. Like, Keith is an A&R. Now he's, he's an A&R for, for Usher, LA and Usher's LA. Uh, label. But he's been, he ain't been an A&R, RCA Records, for 10 years, making records for Chris right. Brown, uh, Ro James, Miguel. You know what I mean? Yeah. I am who I am. I've been in this business for 25, 26 years doing that, making mm-hmm. R&B music specifically, even when... It shifted to EDM and R and B was like dormant. You know what I mean? I was still trying to make it, trying yeah. to and your executives wouldn't want to answer my calls and shit after a while because yeah. <laughs> because the, your R and B music wasn't the dominant Prominent. music. You know what I mean? Um so for us it's it's just what comes natural. It's not a gimmick. We see a lot of promoters fall on our lead, which is admirable and I understand. You know, when you start something that's and it's successful, people are gonna follow suit. The difference between what me and Keith are versus the other cats that are promoting R and B parties is that we actually do it. Yeah, this like that's what I said. You can you can yeah. feel mm. like we actually do Keith, it. I, I DJ. Keith, I've seen Keith uh, yeah. get mad. Yeah. When a rap song play, he don't oh, like no. what rap play. No, no, like he's literally like this ain't no. Yeah. Who's like he, that in? Who's that? He, I, but I love Keith yeah. is a purist. You're a purist. Yeah. That's why it works. Yeah. It's almost like the standard of what it should be. And I was just telling Keith, I'm like, bro, you need to franchise that. He told me we, we had a conversation about it. I'm like, bro, because yeah. I'm like, because I'm like, it beca- it's a brand at this point. Yeah. And if you got like the R&B Wednesdays in Miami yeah. happen and the R&B Wednesdays yeah. in LA, and if a promoter was smart, they would tag on to that. But the curation, the curation, it has to be curated by you guys because yeah. a lot of people try to do it, but you guys, I'm well, like, imitated, yeah. like never literally duplicated. every time we in there, Jermaine is in there, yeah. Usher was in Neo, there, Neo, like up. Janet Jackson, Janet, like people Janet, wanna, Janet pulled up, they want to see it. It's ill. Janet come came to town and I got the call like, yo, Jan wants to come. And that's I'm what like, I'm saying. Word, you know, Janet. That's that that like, that's 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 you know. that's crazy. But I gotta I gotta switch it up a little because you ain't no damn promoter. Fact. You no, ain't I'm no not. damn. I'm DJ. not. No, I'm not. You are not a promoter. You are one of the most legendary producers in history. Yeah. Okay, right, right. Hello. I'll take that. You don't I'll act like it. it. You're so humble. Well, no, here's the deal, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it real, man. And, and it is a, I, I think the word humble, I, I should like the word humility better. For sure. Hmm. Right? Because I know people like to, and, I, and I, I'm not saying that you. you, you no, nah, that's good. I, I, brother, you were Brian yeah, Cox, correct yeah, me. Yeah, I, I want to be, I think people, sometimes the wrong people will use the word humble as a demeaning yes. thing. Yes. You know what I mean? Because I'm not standing on tables and telling this record's the shit. Da, da, da. Yeah. Like, I'm not that person. Yes. You know, if, if you know, some people can oversell um, and some and it works for them. Yeah, for you know sure. what I mean? For me, I've always been about the song. Music. I've always been about the song. If the song is right, like you, you know, you don't have, you don't get to 40 number one records and, you know, over 250 million sold and 10 Grammys. If it's not about like the music. The actual music. You know what I mean? So Go ahead. I'm so, so I, I I I like the word humility because I feel like people try to use the word humble um, to to downplay. You know what I mean? And at my age now, I've been I've been doing this since I was a teenager, and you know, Aaron's been you know was there in the very beginning with me, and um, I, I, I've always had that, the same attitude about the same approach, yeah. how I dealt with my friends, how I dealt with my relationships, um, when I meet people and 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 they. And they I value it. You know what I'm saying? It, it's obviously it's, yeah. it becomes long term. Like exactly. me and you, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, we've been like, in the trenches. You know what I'm saying? For it sure. becomes long term because me, that there's always a bigger picture. There's always a, you know what I mean? But it's all, and that's how that's how I got to those accolades. That's how I view it. You know what I mean? So, so I'm at. So, in your opinion, what happened? Because there was a point where R&B was the number one genre. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then pop. It was our number one pop. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. pop. It was actually pop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and all the the pop artists wanted to do R and B music, yeah. right? Yeah. So what happened? I might just think trends, man. Trends change. 
I think that when EDM made its uh, surge, mm-hmm. um, look great, like I said. and <laughs> I think that when R and B artists started lending our voices mm-hmm. to that music and be, and making these records be bigger than, you know what I mean? Yeah. When you have Usher making without, without you, you. Record, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it DJ becomes like fall this. In love. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is like this. This you know what I mean? They ex- even though they are. Big superstars in their own right now, you know, but that 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 instant gratification yes. at the end, the timing. Yes, you know what I'm saying. It was it wasn't just about the music; it was the timing. And understand, like we, you know, me and Jermaine were doing Vegas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like we saw the shift. You know yeah. what I mean? And it kind of was like, yo, we're going to try to shift with it, but it didn't feel it organic natural. and it feel natural. So it was okay, cool. I mean, you know, when we were doing things with DJs like DJ Chucky and a mm-hmm. couple of things, and, and we built great relationships in that world. Um, um, but but it didn't feel like we should should dive head first in that and try to shift our whole yeah like who we it. are mm-hmm. to do that because you, you, know you, you kind of got a code switch. Yeah, like you can't sing like even Usher without you. It's like that's probably lyrically one of his most. Uh, 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 least sauced mm. lyrics like without mm. you no it's just it's just I literally live. you know what i mean like but like confessions he's talking about my mm. chick on this side i got i mean like, he has so many songs yeah, yes like i'm that. saying you like I mean? sauce so that's what i mean that's culturally yeah sound right I, that actually you know what i mean you just inspired trends me. the culture you, 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 you just made me think about something um the problem is is that the r&b music was it became i lost my train of thought but I know what I was going. I know I was going with it. I said R and B music, EDM money, killed it. Mm-hmm. And the money, EDM killed money it. killed it because R and B like it's like rap. Like Jay Z has never deserted rap. Mm-hmm. Even at 54, 55, where never he is right Jay-Z now. Jay Z on the EDM record. We heard him on the. He did LinkedIn. He did the park. The song with the. I mean, LinkedIn park. park. That's rock. Yeah, what? but I'm saying. But I'm saying. And but whatever he did, he did. But whatever he did. And my, it, it, he, didn't, he, he it didn't overpower the, him. Thank you. That's what I'm trying him. to say. Okay. He didn't. He didn't lean in. He like, didn't, what, like yeah. what, I'm sorry. Like go ahead, example, no, go ahead. Like when artists got a taste of that EDM paper, everything was they the leaned window. in. It was like, oh, we getting this. Oh, get this. Of, oh. <laughs> yeah, like, you know what I mean? And I ain't even got to come with a band. Hey, bro, I just, I got, just pull just up with a DJ and, and I'm going to do. Yes. Thing, ooh, 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 oh, ooh, that's ooh. a big difference. It's a difference. For Jay-Z, when he did Lincoln Park, mm-hmm. he just did Lincoln Park. When he did the uh, the, the Indian um, record. Remember the Punjabi record? Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, Punjabi MC. That's one off. A one off. He didn't lean in and do like, I'm going to do 10 Punjabi MC right now. Not only that, and he wasn't saying, I'm going to India. Right. He's an Indian coming to Brooklyn. I'm about to, yeah, I'm about to go get this Indian money. No, he They're said y'all gonna come mess with me. And what happened with R and B to me was that people, you like, first of all, to me, the first song that no, I'm being. I want to hear it. No, I'm the first excited. song that changed the ecosystem. A lot of people like to say is Neo Closer. That's what the people. That's what a lot of people like to say. I think it's Usher. Oh my God. No, no, no. Okay, okay. Let me let me stop you. Yeah. Uh-oh. Let me stop you. I have to disagree with you. Okay. Let me tell you why. Well, I am. It's a black man. Number one. Hold on. Well, I was a black man. Wrote a song 100%. Mm-hmm. Usher is a black man. OMG is not EDM. OMG is house. Mm. That's why when you, you play OMG in black clubs, I remember I was in the Velvet Room one night. I was at the old Velvet Room. Was mm-hmm. OMG was popping. And Infamous played OMG. And black folks didn't know why they loved this song. But I tell you why black folks love this song. Because it's house music. Right. Mm. It's not it's not techno. Even though techno is black like shit too, by the way. Like, that's wait. different. Like no no no. But, I, but, but, but wait, hold on. He's, he's, by the way, that's how you know he's a purist. Yeah. That's how you know he's a purist. OMG is house. That's how you know he's a purist. That's why black that's why black folks don't black folks never understood why this why I love this pop song. It's because Will I Am is a nigga. Yes. At heart. No matter Absolutely. how we no, no matter, he, no matter he's, what he's you do. He's a nigga from South Central, by the way. He's a nigga. From South Central. You know what I'm saying? And his version of how, if his version of techno is house. Yes. It's mm. Chicago. It's, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's that. Yeah. You know, so if you are from the Midwest, if you're from anywhere where house music is a thing, OMG gives you that. You yes. may, you might have even thought, I'm the only, I, I swear to God, I knew it from the gate. And when I would tell people this, they're like, oh, I never even looked at it that way. It is. Yeah. It's not like, it's not You're right like, though, because it, it, to me it was it, it it didn't feel like it, but I thought it was it. It, it only blew up because Will I Am was a pop. It, and by star. the way, it was a hit record. It was a hit I'm record. Sorry, I, and we a, could all I'm, sing. I'm, it. I'm the student in the room. Mm. 
please give me like the real, real cause. Like, okay, house is like mm-t, mm-t, right. No like houses, houses. House okay, so and then each. Yeah, I say album. It's house the music. same. It's the it's the same. The electric. template. It's the same template, right? The four on the floor, like disco is four on the floor, right? It's the same template, mm-hmm. right? Disco house techno electronic music. It's the same template. Doom. Doom. What's the doom, big doom, distinction? Doom. The difference is what happens in between those four beats. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the difference. So if you like, 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 let's take Beats. Kanye's "Faded," right? "Faded" samples Mr. Fingers is like a really popular yes. house record, right? Oh yes, I'll take another I, I, one. Thank I, I, you. I know. Uh, <laughs> you need some more of this Yoko yeah, Vodka yeah, yeah, yeah. here. Yeah, shout out to Polo the Don. Yeah. Uh, 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 um, Give it a little more splash. Give a shout out to Polo. That's a black Low. man. Don't be Low. shy. Yeah, we own it, baby. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so no, um, um. Mr. Fingers is a popular house record. I mean, obviously Kanye's from Chicago, mm-hmm. so he mm. understands that whole shit. So you have to boom, 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 in between. Doom, 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 doom. That's house. Where techno is. I know it's faster. It's just. So dim, Rihanna. Dim, 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 dim. It's on the one. How, on, house is. <laughs> Houses. Talk, we got a professional producer in here. Come on. He's we got a professional producer in here. House is what's in between. Oomped, 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 oomped. That's the nigga shit. Oomped, 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 uh. That's the groove. So black folks didn't know when we play OMG. Niggas like, oh, is that. Mm, 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 is that. Mm, 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 got us mm, in. Mm, 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 mm. That's what. That is what mm. made. That's what's what make black people move. Right, white people, then, 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 but it's still on the floor. Yeah, still, still on the floor. So disco, which is the actual wow. foundation of all of it, really. Disco's because disco's on the floor. Did you know? Did you know that Michael Jackson's Off the Wall album was a disco album? Yeah, it's the last great disco. The last great disco album. No, I'm saying, no, by now, the way, he knows more about me, but I'm just saying. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, it's I didn't, the last I, great disco. I didn't album. realize that because listening to and it, it's beautiful that that's the last great disco album. It's beautiful because it kind of got snuck in. By the way, you know. No, yeah, no, yeah. I know. But but let me tell you why it's beautiful yeah. because Michael was like really partying. Mm. Yes, he was at yes. Studio he 54. Was at 54. <laughs> yes, he was really fucking partying. Yes, when he was doing the Wiz. He was really he was at, he fucking was outside. outside. He was outside. Yes, and that's what, he wanted to make a disco and album, he, and that's that, when he asked Quincy to. But Quincy made it. That's why yeah. I, I think that might is that the only like, disco album that Quincy it. ever made. No, Quincy made fucking Brothers Johnson uh, Stomp. Shit, you crazy? You know, I'm uh, in the room with a producer. George, George Benson, give me the night. Love it. Crazy, like he just like 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 the Brothers Johnson was a da- was a dance group. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they made, you know, records like I'll Be Good to You and Stomp. And, yeah. you know, like it was, the Stomp is like disco. Yeah. But like funk. Yeah. Boom, 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 for, boom. Fin, 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 boom, boom. Then, 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 I mean, like Benjamin right on the strings, Louis Johnson playing bass. <laughs> yeah. Like it's no, boom, boom, boom. Like that. Like Rod, <laughs> like, and then you gotta, you, cause Rod Temperton, who was yeah. Quincy's main guy, yeah. comes from the great disco group Heat Wave. He was the keyboardist and the songwriter. Wait, he this waved. is why I love him so much because he's educated me. So, and right, I didn't I'm know that. Like, so he waved so so boogie nice. Dude, mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. fucking Rod Temperton. Mm-hmm. Rod Temperton wrote mm-hmm. Always and Forever. Mm. Always and Forever. The funkiest man, white, the blackest white man you ever know is and Rod he, Temperton. And, and, yeah, and he wrote he wrote Rock with You too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He wrote Give Me the Night, Rock yeah, with You, Stomp, Acapella, Thriller, Lady in My Life. By the way, this is. I, I want to say something. This is why this show is needed. Because people be really thinking that all you did was play the piano. You know your shit. I know shit. the shit, bro. Right. Yeah. If you don't know your shit, yeah. how are you going to talk Story, it? How are you going to lead the room? Well, the question, here's, here's what I'm going to tell people, right? You know, Jermaine Dupree is one of my best friends. And how Easy that time. happens is because we can have very highly intelligent conversations about music. Yes. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. He be like, like I would love to we, be on a fly we, in a wall with we one of those can have, we, we like, like, there are days, like, I, I, before I went to New York, this past time, I went over to the studio, we were, we were working on, we were trying to finish up this thing for, we had one more song to do for Usher and we had to finish up, like, overdubs. But before we 
did that. This we, we do this every day. Mm, exactly. We talk about this every day. We talk about music every day like this, right? Mm. Before we went in to do it, you know, Michael Bittman's got his, you know, the documentary came yeah, out. Yeah, I watched it. So documentary, we start watching documentary. Mm-hmm. And in the middle of like in the middle of the first like 15, 20 minutes, I say, yo, stop the documentary, bro. I was like, can we say that New Edition is the greatest group ever? Right? Hold on, I'm just now I like this. Let's so go. he says, he says, nah, 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 nah. Not, not the guy greatest army group ever. He was like, I mean, you know, like we got the temptations. I was like, cool. So we got into a whole conversation about all that. I was yeah. like, yeah, cool. I said, but okay, before and, and me and him like having a real intel. He's giving me his points. Yeah. I'm like, you know, yeah. you're right. Yeah. I mean, then I said, but nah, but no. Nah, but think about this. I said, I just want to put this on your mind. Name a group where everybody in that group went platinum. Outside, outside of that group, solo. and nobody. And, and he was like, "Wow, you know what? You might because initially, initially it was like, okay, Ten Space might be the greatest group, and, and uh, New Edition is the greatest boy band. Mm-hmm. That was the thing. That was the, that was the compromise we came. Yep. But then once I said that, he was like, they might be the greatest group. I think these are the kind of conversations we have what's the biggest, every single day. What's the biggest disagreement? Like you found you and JD on complete opposite sides of it. Like um, that's your point of view. I can't remember. So y'all usually kind of we're on usually the same. Well, on well, the same page. I'll be honest with you, it's rare. We're on the same that page. Musical geniuses go against each other unless they see the world totally different. The fact mm-hmm. that him and JD has had so many hits, I, I, I already know that they don't because yeah, we don't really have arguments like that. And, and, and not only that, it's usually this. But I'm but just, just I want to say something. <clears throat> the goal is always the best song. Yeah, period. So it's not really about arguments as much as about, yo B, let's try what you just yeah. said. Let me try what I said. Let's listen to it. Mm-hmm. It's always a compromise in the room. Always, but. Always. It's always, always a thought process always. in the room. And you don't just get there. You got to figure out how you want to get there. And so I, I mean, I already knew that they wouldn't have those. Wait, but how'd you get that relationship with JD? Well, I mean, it's, I mean I've been writing songs with them since I was 20. So but I'm, for, I'm 45. But how'd you get the song to JD? You didn't just, JD picked up the song. Well, no, I mean, what happened was I was I working with Jagged at, Edge. And I heard that you worked at, the guy you got on was you worked at Guitar Center. Well, okay, that's that's before yeah. you, you're taking oh. it. Yeah, so you're going so, you're, you're going, going early, early. By the way, that's the, the, way, that's the start, first start. time. No, let me tell you I was in Houston. The first day I ever heard his name, because remember, his name is Brian Cox. Mm-hmm. There was a football player who was Brian big Cox, at the time yeah. named Brian Cox. He played for the Miami Dolphins. I'm, Miami from, Dolphins. I'm from Miami, so I would oh, always wow. get... Yeah, yeah. So, so what happened I'm was... I'm born in Miami, from I'm Houston. In, I'm trying to get in the music business, and I'm in Guitar Center, and a dude works there. He was like, bro, Brian Cox was in the Guitar Center. That's, we're good. That's how he got on. It's and I fact. remember thinking like, I didn't say it, but I was like, who the fuck is Brian It's Cox? a fact. So I was thinking the football player. I'm like, no. what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> so then it was, that's why, is that probably why you did fact. Brian Michael Cox? Yeah. The the well, no, I mean, <laughs> Brian Michael Cox came because I was, when, in the 90s, you know, everybody wanted to come up with like, like names for, yeah. you know, when you, when you coming up in the 90s, you're like, uh, I'm gonna be someone, 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 so I'm gonna be. So I was trying to come up with a name and I couldn't come up with a name. I was trying to, you know, so. <laughs> What happened was I, I, I uh, <laughs> my my name my name is Brian Michael Paul Cox. That's my name. Okay, right? and I was gonna go by just like Brian Michael. Mm-hmm. I was gonna do like some like avant garde. I thought it was some avant garde shit. I was yeah. gonna put like a little accent over the e or some <laughs> stupid shit. That always and gets the people going. <laughs> the first record that I, that the hit record I ever had was "Get Gone" by Ideal. And the credits. They're gonna leave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me alone. Yep. Is it bad? Yeah, it's the first hit record I've had. Hello. Yeah. It was. <laughs> yeah. Nigga, what? Nigga, I don't want you no more, man. So, so <laughs> when Chris, my, you know, Chris Hicks was my manager, noontime, they were my managers. Chris was like, yo, turn in your, you gotta turn in your credits. And I was like, damn, I ain't got a name yet. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. was just like, what the fuck is my name? You know, I, I, wrote, I wrote down like 10 names, like, and I'm thinking, like, what the fuck would I answer to? <laughs> You know what I mean? Because because once you put the name it's down, out there. that's the your name. The branding starts right? right there. So I'm like, damn, if I if I pick a whack name. It's going to live with you. Then that's my name, right? Yep. I'm like, oh, fuck it. I'll just, okay, let me try to make this shit cool. <laughs> Brian Michael. And let me put the E before I the can. A instead of spelling it right and put a little accent up top and all that shit. <laughs> just imagine the I did all that shit, right? So the, so the first, the first pressing of ideal single get yeah. going the very first pressing is like produced by brian michael but it has like this little accent yeah. on the top and 
You know, and I just remember being to myself, saying to myself, like, you know what? And then the song charted. It charted. So when it charted, it charted. And as a producer, it was like, it just said Brian, hyphen, Michael. And then but inside of the um, writer's credit, it had B.M. Cox. Mm -hmm. And Noonie, always from the time I've met him, Noonie always called me. You know, be Cox or be Stax or yeah. Stax, Cox, Stax. Like he just always, he was the only, he was the only person that would call yeah. me that. And I and I remember, I remember going to noon, like, man, I, I think I might have fucked up my name. Right? <laughs> we gotta do this over. And noon was like, yo, man, you have a cool fucking name, man. Why don't you just go by Brian Michael Cox? And I was like, <laughs> okay, that might work. I'll go with that. No, I, I like thought about other people like Brian, Brian Alexander Morgan. Yeah. I thought about other names. Like, okay, that that, 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 that has a ring it, to it. It always an OG to just throw you, like just like, man, go fuck it. Just call yeah, he, was like, he was like, yeah. yo, he was like, yo, what are you thinking? Stax, yeah. what are you thinking? Brian yeah. Cox. Exactly. Shout and out to Nooney, by the way. So Ray always says it's important to put a name to stuff, right? So like when you did find the perfect name and the brand and a way to put yourself out there, how did that change things for you? So it's like, okay, I'm not going by this anymore. Now I'm going by Brian Michael Cox. Was what the I, branding important? Well, it wasn't. What it did, it allowed me to be myself. Mm. I didn't have to create a persona. Good one. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You just, like, it's, it's like, exactly. It's it, like sometimes if you got to be the character, right. character, you feel it. Mm. So like, for instance, all of my... You know, friends and mentors early on, you know, I know all of their personalities. You know what I mean? Like, I know Phelan. Yeah, Jazzy And I Faye. know Jazzy. They're two different people. I always tell people it's a difference. You know between, like, it's, it's a difference like, between Ray and Raymond. Yeah, like, I know, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know Jeffrey. Yeah. And I know oh, okay. J-Dub. Yes. I know Anthony. Yeah. And I know Dent. Yes. You know, these, so... For me, I was able to not have to have that separation. Yes. Um, it was, I could be Brian Michael Cox and just be Brian. That's incredible. You know what I mean? Um, and not have to be like, oh, I got to put on I gotta put on this Persona. on this thing. You know what I mean? It's I, like. I want to tell you something. Character. I don't have to. Even yeah. Polo. Like, I've known Polo since, you know, me, me, and, me, me and Jamal went, I went to, <laughs> Clark went to Morehouse. I knew him as Jamal. That's crazy. I know Jamal and Shout I know Polo. HBCUs. I had a, uh, I, I was reading Will Smith's book and he said, he said that when he started the Fresh Prince, um, I think Alfonso Ribeiro told him, whatever you do, name your character Will. Yeah. Because he said, if you give yourself a new name, you'll be known as that for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Martin Good Lawrence, advice. show is called Martin. Martin. Right, that's why the brand is always connected. Yeah. So when no he matter said what. That, no matter what, I, I never, like even Steve Harvey right. said it, like, that's why his name was, um, Steve on, on the, the show, show. show. Cedric Entertainer on the show was called. So said yeah. they understood if you change your if way. you change because no, if you change your name like Carlton the, is still Carlton to us. Right. Yeah. What's his real? We don't know right. Alfonso Ribeiro. We know Alfonso Ribeiro, but we don't. No, but but but, but we but we know Carlton. So it's Carlton. like so that's probably that, even okay. Tommy. Tommy's real name is Tommy. Tommy exactly. Martin. They his real name was Tommy. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So you name. So he said in the book. He said when you have a show. Name it after yourself because if you do, if you don't, they will always call you that character, and mm -hmm. they'll never let you grow. Yeah. Mm. So for me, when I when I was when Nooney was like, "Yo, man, just be Brian Michael Cox," man, I was like, "Say oh. less." And then so, my thing is kind of cool. That's, you know, I always want to ask you. And I, by the way, shout out to Noon. Noon hits me like Noon hit it's me like my son. Life, yo. Sends me your videos. My son be hit me about you, nah. Ray. You killing it. But I want, I always wanted to ask a question because noon time was Chris, uh, Noon. Terry, Nooney, Ryan Glover, and Ryan. Yeah. Why the hell is the company named Noon? Okay, so I don't know if I can really go into the entire details yeah. about this. <laughs> oh wow! But I can say that Nooney is the genesis of it. Noon is the Noon is the they all came up together. But Noon had the paper. They all had paper. Yeah. But Noon was already, Noon was already down here making moves, and he, they all came down oh, here. Oh, so he was, he, he was, he was a self starter. So before, all... before it was Noon time, it was called Revolutionary Records. Mm. And Jaha comes from that. Shakir comes from that. That's what I'm saying. You got Noon, Jarell, Noon time like, got Noon a whole time. lot yeah, of fucking yeah, lineage yeah. in the music business. Um, like... and Jaha and Shakir, them, you, they ran the company with mm -hmm. them. It was a whole thing. Um. They can explain it better than I can because I was so young and I yeah. came into the game. You just happy so to be in the room. Bright eyed, bushy tailed. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what exactly. niggas was into. I didn't know shit. You know exactly. what I'm saying? I just was like, oh, what, what, where's the studio? <laughs> 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 That's what I mean. He was a young kid with the glasses yeah, on. Just the glasses on, the glasses on. I'm at the glasses on. I'm coming from band camp. From exactly. Band camp. Like, yo, what's, 
Where's the studio? You so, know what I mean? So I wanted to ask you. I also had another room. Is it true that you went to school with Beyonce or you grew high up school? What? With the high school with Beyonce? Beyonce and Latoya. Oh, it's a fact. Them. I mean, I knew them. We, yeah. we all, we, we all, we all. We all we, I, I remember. I think I saw a clip where you was like, "Don't be the shows. guy." Yeah, don't be the like, guy. What's his name? You know him. Uh, my boy Lindo. That's my guy. Though. Yeah, you said I don't want to kill. That's my friend. But you're like, that's my homie. Like, yeah, exactly. You know what it is though. I'm glad you said. I'm gonna say, don't be him because life, life is life. Nah. Right, so I, I, I don't want to say that. <laughs> no, but like, no, no, I'm about to. I'm about to tell you something. I'm about to tell you something. I mean, I was about to tell you something. The point that I like is is that you made him human. Yeah, mm. because he was just like the dude that was in Beyonce's prom picture. So sometimes people forget that he has a, a good guy, life. man. He has to have wife. He has a kids. He has. He's doing his thing. He's doing well. Happy. Exactly. You so it's mean? like when people be like, yeah. "Oh, you're the guy that he's like, bro. I was a kid, man. Like, yeah. I mean, I think about. It. I mean, shit. If my ex girlfriend became Beyonce. You know what I mean? That would be fucked up. You know what I mean? I wouldn't know what to it do. It may not be that fucked up for me though because of who I am. But because exactly. <laughs> but if you, right. but if you I'm just, good too. Because yeah, you're yeah, Michael yeah, Cox. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, it was yeah, almost yeah. a sweet story. Yeah, like, yeah, you guys were 15 exactly. right yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Be that oh, wow. Up. Who knew y'all yeah. would be the future yeah. of music? But no, okay. I, I knew them well. But I mean, we they were, they were at one point we were very, very close. Yeah. All, well, all of them. I was yeah. close with uh, Latoya, Latavia, uh, Kelly, and Beyonce. Um, at, at one point, um, we were children though. So I yeah. want to, I want to preface. And that. well, y'all all had the dreams. Did y'all all yeah, have no, the dreams? No, no, they actually made me believe it. Wow. Mm. They're the ones that actually made them and my my boy Greg Curtis. There was another guy named Teron Mitchell who was in a group called Groove You that mentored us. You know, how they kids. make you believe? Because it it was real. It was tangible. Yeah, it's right? like, it was like, doable. It was okay. You hear people about okay, okay. okay for, if, if I'm watching videos every day, right? Mm-hmm. I'm at the crib. I'm watching, you know, Video Soul, Rap City, MTV mm-hmm. Raps. Oh. You know, and, and I'm dreaming Basement. like, yo, I want to be there. I want to be. I want to make music for these people. I want to be. Or I want to. Or I'm in a group, and I want to. We singing, yeah. and we trying to get we on. We trying to get a record deal. Getting a record deal or getting a publishing deal or getting discovered as a producer was so far fetched. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Being a kid from the southwest side of Houston, Texas in the early nineties like, was so it was so far fetched. Because it's like because it's like all you got is Where? the boys in how and and, 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 J- and how, how? Rap records is that where's it gonna what's gonna like yeah. how is this gonna happen? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I went to performing arts high school that opened my mind up to the possibility of making it outside of the city, mm. right? Mm. I went to a school called a uh, high school for uh, performing visual arts, right? Right now it's called Kinder HSPVA because somebody bought into it. But at the time, 600 students, all mm. dreamers. Yeah. Right? That's incredible. Um, music, art, dance, theater. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so our teachers taught us to really expand in our mind. We were really we were dreamers. You exactly. Know what I mean? That's where, in that environment is where it, opened up for me like yo like how am I gonna make it out of mm. this like I don't like this is what I wanna do how the fuck am I gonna get to and your, and your, and your mindset was it was go to my go to Miami go to Atlanta no, initially what I wanted to they, they, though that school was prepping us for New York mm. I'm gonna keep it real from a from a theater musical theater perspective from a music perspective you know, our jazz department had all, I mean, people who are legends now. Robert mm-hmm. Glass was my best friend. Yeah. Mm. And he was a legend now, but we were just best friends running around fucking HSPVA. That's exactly. crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Jason Moran, who's a legend, legend jazz pianist. You know mm. what I'm saying? Chris Dave, who's a legendary uh, drummer and band leader, uh, who played with everybody from Mink Edition to Q-Tip to Most yeah. Def to this guy's a fucking legend. You know what mm. I mean? In yeah. the world. Um, you know, these are people I went to school with. Mm-hmm. Donnie Scants, who's my cousin. Yeah, I didn't you know, know that. These Scants is crazy. My cousin. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I, I went. We went to high school together. This yeah. is my family. Yeah. So from you know, these are the kids. These are the kids I were I was around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every day was discovery, right? Mm. So you get to a place. I'm a senior in high school. In walks. I'm you. I met. And interacted with the girls before because we were in this thing called uh, the people the people's workshop. Yeah, all the talented kids in Houston. It was like a competition, people's workshop, and it led to this big uh, ending. It's called like the Sammy Davis Junior Awards, where you would win an award or who was the most talented or whatever. And, you know, Robert beat my ass two years in a row. <laughs> and, you know, the, you know, but just but just in you know, it, it it was it was 
really, really good uh, friendly competition and motivation for the kids who were mm-hmm. creatives. Yeah. Um, so we were very aware of who uh, Girls Time slash Destiny, who they were. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm a senior at high school's orient- orientation. I'm running freshman orientation. Mm-hmm. And in walks Beyonce and Latoya. That's Freshman year. They're, they're freshman year, my senior year. You still remember it? Like I mean, like yesterday. yesterday. Absolutely. And walked, you know, and we already knew each other. Yeah. So there was pleasantries. We yeah. talked. And Latoya actually had mentioned to me, like, yo, like, you know, we about to get a record deal. Yeah. You know, we've been recording with so and so and so, boom, boom. So I knew kind of early on that they were actually going at, I, you know, I didn't, we didn't know exactly all the details. We knew that they were going after it, that Matthew away. was going after it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and um, then they got, you know, then, the announcement happened. They got signed. They big, basically in the middle of the first semester, and they was it gone. was like, okay, they're signed, and then they were off. Mm. They went to Oakland to go work with Dwayne Dwayne Wiggins, mm. and because they were signed to his production company, Grassroots Entertainment, so they went down to start making songs. And they would call me. My mom would allow me to talk to them or call them long distance because she knew that that's what I wanted to do in my life. Mm. And she knew that they were like a gateway to it. Sure. Or even just a just a gateway to my vision. Or, or light. Not necessarily, or light that, yeah, that, not that necessarily like, them putting me on. But like you but can follow what they did. To yeah, get, like, like what get the do? information. Yes, exactly. Right? Which is important. And I would I would talk to them all the time. Mm-hmm. And they would call me and they would play songs over the phone and I was just like, yo, man, I got to fucking make it. I can't get out like, of here. That shit was really, yeah. that was really like the thing that was like, and then one day, you know, I get a call. I was like, B, it's like, yo, I, I, we, I told my dad I want to do songs with you. Because I would always Fire. hound him. Yeah. I pull him in this, like, practice yeah. room. Like, I got this song. Like, yeah, I, you know. Exactly. And one day she called me, like, yo, we want to do a song with you. We want to do, like, we want to do a session with you. Like, I told my dad, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever. And I was like, hell yeah. So I got, <laughs> I was working with a team at the Greg Curtis, was my mentor at the time. He had yeah. a studio. He was the one that kind of put the whole thing together. And the guy, Teron Mitchell, who was like another guy who he was, he was uh, signed to Atlantic Records. He was mm-hmm. in a group called Groove You, signed to Atlantic Records. And he mentored us too, also. And then my best friend at the time, who passed away, Scooby, we, came, we were like a team, like a writing mm-hmm. team. Like we were come together and we're going to write these songs. And we were like, we're going to make it. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> and we, we made like, you know, two or three demos for them. They cut two. And I just remember that was the. That was the moment. Yeah. It was like me, it was like Greg had left me in a room with them and was like, hey man, you know, figure it out. So so was that, <laughs> that, that, that was the moment where you happen. felt confident to figure it out or was that with the moment that someone heard what you did and that led to many more opportunities? No, that was the moment when I realized I wanted to be a, I knew, That's what I'm about to say because yeah. I remember the day that, I remember the day that I knew I was going to do this. Like, yeah. and it was with Jeff Dixon, yeah. Shaka's brother. I remember, like, I wanted to work for them so bad because they were like, they, yeah. I went to high school That's with Ludacris. Yeah. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I seen somebody who I went to high school with become mm-hmm. a global superstar. Yeah. And I remember I went to work for them, and I was Shaka used to run from me. Yeah. <laughs> he used to run from me. <laughs> like he'd see me and go the other way, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you, I'm like, I'm gonna get your ass. You gonna be ass. my friend, nigga? You, we friends now. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying, but no, I, no, I'm and I remember I saw Jeff. And he was like, play me a song. And I remember I was like, bro, I always want to work for you. And he was like, you got it on your own. And I was, at that moment, I don't know what it was mentally. It something clicked. clicked in my head. Like, I could do this shit. No, literally. Like, and, and nothing came from that. But yeah. that moment, hearing somebody who I, I respect and look mm. up to tell me, you can do it, that was enough man, for me. Man, listen, I'm, I'll never forget that session, man. It was because only, only Kelly and Beyonce came to the session. And Tina, Miss Tina came. And it was like, you know. Miss Tina brought us Burger King and shit, and <laughs> you know, and we cut these songs. And I remember being amazed at the speed, mm. right? These, these girls were thirteen; they mm. were young, crazy. You know what I mean? They weren't like they were thirteen years old, fourteen years old, mm. and the level of discipline, like skill, mm. yeah. You know what I mean? So you, it, it, so does anything that f- happened, did anything surprise you? Nothing. That's Nothing. Big. You Nothing. know, some people, you know, I'm pretty sure you got a list of people that surprised you. Oh, hell I yeah. Can't believe he made. <laughs> yeah, but for them, it was, it was, it was, it was destined. You know I mean, no, yeah. no, no, no pun intended. Right. But it was literally destined for them. Because <laughs> literally, I love it that. was, it was, I remember doing the session and everything I gave to her, she gave back like, 10 times like it was like wow. it was like 
she gave it back so good. I was like, okay, uh, <laughs> next line. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, exactly. like you were shocked damn, at like, like, the advancement of her. She's 13. Uh, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is going Absolutely. on right here? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I remember I was like, this, this. It's special. Like, because you know, we, we at that age, I might have been 17 at the time, 18 at the time. And I remember you, 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 you struggle with the concept of, well, when you're a teenager, I want to be in a group. Yeah. I want to be a performer. You know, I want to be on stage, I want the lights. You know, and all, all my friends, like, you know, they, I was in groups because my homies wanted to yeah, be, yeah. you know, stars. <laughs> Quartet you know I mean? shit, y'all yeah, 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 We be singing like a mother. All, all, my, all my homies wanted to be artists, you know yeah. what I mean? And I remember that moment, and now I think back, that's probably why Greg left me in the room by myself. Yeah. That moment, it was like, oh no, this is what I'm doing. Exactly. Like, fuck being an artist, fuck chasing groups, fuck all that. I'm going to be the orchestrator. I'm going to be a producer. This is what I want to do. So I'm going to ask you a question. So what record in the studio, and I I know you have this moment because Mm -hmm. we all do at some point. What record was, what was the first record that you were in the studio and you made and you felt like, oh, I'm out of here. This this is it. This is it. Okay. And what, and did it become a hit? Okay. So, so here's the deal, right? I have a lot of mini moments like that. (laughs) Like many moments was like you hear record and you feel it, you're like, oh, this record's gonna be a hit. Yeah. But I I but not like a I I always kept my head down and, and mm. I yes. never was like, oh, this is gonna be the one to make me, me the, out the hood. Yeah. You know what I mean? I never was like that. Yeah. But I would tell you that when we finished Be Without You, now mind you, at that point yeah, that, but that's okay, but at that point yeah, you knew at that, that, that point, was gonna I, be I made a lot of records at that yeah, point. Yeah, I'll be mean, hell yeah. But I'm just telling you, when we finished that song, I remember it, 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 even the story around getting the song done mm-hmm. is ill, but even in the mix, right? So what happened was I was in New York working, I think, on Joe or something, right? And Dave Pensada and Jason Joshua were in L.A. mixing Be Without You, right? And with Ron Fair. So this is before we had, like, you know... Uh, I message and all that did, shit. Did, 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 did be without you come after Mariah? It came after Mariah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It did. It came. So 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 it was um, mm-hmm. it was uh, this is before we had like we could send passes back to yeah. the phone. This is yeah, like E net whatever. Yeah. So we in the studio. Just like some high tech yeah. you know, <laughs> shit. <laughs> sending MP3s through the internet, <laughs> and we were sending mixes back and back, passes mm-hmm. back and forth. They would send me a mix. I would give them notes. They would take the notes. Send me the mix back. Whatever. So I remember I got the final mix back, right? Mm-hmm. And this was this was the day that T Pain got signed to Jive too, by the way. Oh wow! Right, because that's the, that's all the story. But because in the studio, Divine and Akon came to see me. Yeah, in the studio. This was the, this was the day that T Pain got signed. Um, I was like, "Yo, I got this song, man. I want." I want we're gonna listen to her together. Like this yeah. is Mary J. Blige, this is Mary's new joint. We just, me and Chante just did this shit, whatever, whatever. And Devon said, Yeah, play it. So it was like me, Divine, Akon, Boo was in there, you know, just the whole crew. Everybody yeah. who's like, you know, Atlanta, we just having sure. a good time, having drinks, kicking it. For sure. Play the song. And mind you, I've been working on this song back and forth with them for months. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was kind of tired of listening to the song yeah. at this point. I was like, yeah, okay, it was fatigue just, from just the put drama the shit out yeah. and we'll see what we're going to do. Right, but but Ron had like you know laced the strings, he had laced her vocal, he had did a little tune, he like you know bumped the vocal up, tuned the vocal a little bit, like he did some shit that he did some shit that I wasn't ready for, yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear, you, <laughs> you know what I mean? To the next oh, level. Well, until this? we got this, until we got this final version, and then I get the final version and we I play it, and when it's over. The entire room is just silent. Like, and Akon says, Man, play that shit again. So they Bring play that it. Shit back. Play it again. And after that, he was like, yo, that is probably the most incredible shit I've ever heard in my life. Wow. Mm. And I remember being like, okay, if they're dropping this song this week, next week my life is different. Mm. That was the first time I ever felt like, okay, not, Shit's about yeah, you had many moments. Okay, cool. Like, oh, I'll make a record, boom. Like, yeah. Well, you got a bad was a moment. Yeah. Right? And I knew my life was going to be different. But yeah. still, 
when you making records with a heavyweight like Jermaine you Dupree, know he gonna get the, he's, he's going to get credit for sure. Oh, I see what you're saying. You, th- th- there's a level of confidence you have you where own. you're writing or producing mm-hmm. with somebody like Jermaine. You're like, oh, yeah, when, you know, we, we make less good. Not, not, like, but, but, but to be honest with you, you can also ride that coattail. That, yeah. You can ride the coattail. Like, yeah. well, that's, what, that's what Teron and I did yeah. for Dr. Luke. Like, yeah. there was times when we was in the room, and he was like, this is what's going to happen. And I'm like, for, okay. for real? Okay. okay. So many mm-hmm. times. And then I've seen him do it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this month. Even records I produced by different. myself for So yeah. So Dev. I produced He Can't Love You by myself. But oh. I knew that once he... Bombs said, dropping. I got goosebumps. <laughs> I got goosebumps. That once, song is incredible. Once he said, you. Brian, I'm going to make He Can't Love You the first single, then it's like, okay, cool. It's in, good, it's in good hands. Exactly. At that point, it's not even. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm even sitting there talking about it, I kind of took for granted the actual system yes. of So So Deaf. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I just knew I could drop my records in there and, and it'd be good. Be good. Yes. So. To have a record oh, so, so. Yeah. with an artist that I always wanted to work with, Mary J. Blige, like Mary J. Blige was on my hit list. Yes. There was only like maybe three or four artists on my hit list. And uh-huh. Mary was one of them. Yep. And to have that record, <laughs> to have Jimmy Iveen call, calling your phone, to have Ron Fair calling your phone, to have Interscope on your line about promo. Exactly. To have, you know what I mean? I was like, okay, this is, this, this is going to be big. a big, Huge year for me. Yes, I've, I've, I've might have mentioned I would have been making a bunch of records already. Yeah, that were coming out. Yes, so I'm like, oh yeah, this is gonna be crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I would say Mary's "Be Without You" is the, so. But is the I would, okay, that's great. But I was asking you because obviously I, I'm I'm in the music business, and when you work with creatives like yourself, mm. you you know you're just creating. Yeah, it's like it's kind of like I'm just doing what I I know how to do. Hopefully, some sticks. But exactly. Yeah. But <laughs> what was the song that you said? I, like it's kind of like you know it's like it's like a Rubik's cube in your hand. You're like trying to figure yeah. it out. And what's the song that you said? Hold on, I've solved the code. Like and oh did yeah, it come yeah. Out? Oh no, it was a, uh, it was um, ideal. It was get gone. It was get gone. No, but I'm, no, no. I take it back. I take it back. Get gone was. I felt like I solved it, but I also felt like it was luck. Exactly right. Well, I felt luck. like I solved the equation. Was. Little Mo's forever. Dun, 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 take it. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah that's because good. I felt like, oh, I can go in the studio and make that's whatever. That's so different from all the other songs. But for, for Tarani was for Tarani was music for love for Mario. Yeah, I you, felt I felt like when I made Little Mo's forever, mm-hmm. I felt like okay, I can go. I can. I know what like, it hit. Because 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 in our world, that you can have a shot, but that don't mean that they know that you're the guy, and mm. you got to find a way to become the guy. So it's kind of like. B. Cox made a hit. Now I'm gonna be the nigga y'all call when y'all need. No, a but hit. no, no, no. I'm not. That's his perspective. I'm talking about the perspective of the industry watching the industry, him. Yeah. So the industry watching him is like, oh, he has a hit, but then it's also gonna be he's Jermaine's guy because in our business, in our business, in our business, no, no, in our business, they're always trying to figure out who has the magic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you have Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, right? But if you have to be intimately involved to know who does what, what? Rodney J. Like, like, like. You and know, my thing is too. You have to understand. You know. Um, I think I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I could be wrong. I don't, I don't think I'm wrong about this. I might be the only producer Uh-oh. that has worked with Jermaine mm-hmm. that has had proper success outside of that mm. system. That's, that's true. That's right? true. Um, um, but you and, stayed down though. That's the oh, best no, that's part. That's my nigga. That's, like, that's, that's the best part. Nothing that about thing. that guy. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I ride for that guy. I love Probably that. Tell me shit about him. Yes, that's love Jermaine. I know that's right. You know what I mean, I love that. And I, I don't, I don't care. Like then there's like mm-hmm. niggas say they want to say about it. Oh, Cox, you could, you could have done so and so and so. Like nah, that's the magic my, y'all created is unmatched. And, and it's just, I mean, it's my brother, man. Exactly. Has your loyalty ever gotten away of you kind of like furthering your career, working no, with other people? Never. Good. Now you, I, like, like when you loyal to the brand, you just it's, you. It's kind of like being in a relationship with a man and a woman. And I hate to call that because they're both men, but it's one of the things where people are going to try to pull you. Like, yo, come over and fuck with me. Yeah, yeah that's like, you, what I'm asking. That's, but that's my point. But mm-hmm. you, if you loyal to who you with, they're really testing you. Yeah. Mm. Like, let me see how loyal you are to you this. Are once, real, you sh- yeah. once you shut it down, then word gets out. Yeah. He's not leaving yeah, because yeah. He, I mean, he's not leaving JD. Him and, like, once that happens, people start knowing. Cause let me tell you guys something that's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I've never been signed to social debt. Wow. I knew that. I knew that. Just doing all the good work? 
Just now they, no, no, I knew that. They were just friends. I was signed to Noontime. I made some records with Brian and Brandon Casey from Jagged Edge. They then took those records to Jermaine Dupree. JD was like, who made these records? It was like, it's this little nigga in at no Noontime. Time. They got him in the seat room. The skinny nigga, too. Skinny, skinny with I'm glasses. Skinny, yep. 125 pounds yep. with glasses. You know what I mean? And he was like, okay, I want to meet I want to meet the kid. Yeah. We met. He was like, all right, I'm going to call Ryan. You know, I'm going to call Ryan tomorrow or a couple of days. You know, him and Ryan made a deal. That's how it happened. Why That's not right. sign it so so dot fat anyway? We, we, because, I mean, I was already signed. You already signed. So he called it. I so, was already so, in the deal. So, so you got to call Ryan Glover. So to Ryan say, Glover. I want to yeah. collab with him. Yeah. Let's figure out how it looks. So Ryan and JD made a deal. And Noontime and, and So Steph made a deal, like a non exclusive deal that non-exclusive. just basically locked in my producer fee and locked in. It was like a song deal, basically. Yeah, best, yeah. It was like a never ending song deal. Okay. Yeah. But it was like a song deal. Locked in my fee for records I made with him. Locked in my fee for records I made without him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Locked in my royalty rate. Mm hmm. And it locked in my publishing. That's fire. So then, so then once that was locked in, me and Jermaine was off to the races. He was on the ride. Was that the b- most important relationship in your career? Your relationship with JD? It's probably the most important relationship. If I look back on it now, knowing what I know now, I would say yes. Absolutely. What would be second? at the time? At the time, I probably didn't think so. At the time, when I was younger, because mm-hmm. I was trying to. Noontime was the most. Mumble was my most Got important it. relationship. At the I would say Noontime was probably second. Okay. Um, but now I look back on it. And I'm glad that Ryan and Chris made that deal. And I'm pretty sure they're glad they made it too. A, <laughs> I was signed to their joint venture publishing company. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. so, so I'm pretty sure they were glad that I made that deal. But but in hindsight, and even now, because now, now who we are to one another now, I would have never imagined that. Mm-hmm. That we would be who we are to one another now. You know what I mean? That. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 but by the, I, by the way, I love you and JD relationship. I love that. I didn't know you did. He can't love you by yourself. That's so let me tell you this story. Crazy. It's an ill story behind yeah. this, right? So I'm a, I made another record, me and Kevin, Kevin Hicks, <laughs> Chris's brother, older brother, who's the, who was actually the guitar player for Noon Times. So like any guitars from Aaliyah's I Don't Wanna to, you know, uh, Jagged Edges, Hailand yeah. to, you know, I mean, he just, you know, he, he was the guitar, he was the resident guitar composer yeah. for Noon Time. So I made... Uh, um, a record that Jagged for Jagged mm. called I Don't Wanna right and everybody was excited about this song it was super like this record this record is smash whatever whatever, whatever right and Chris this, listen me and Chris have only had and I, you know Chris is my that's my brother Chris is one of the smartest men in the him, city right I he's family him. he's yes. literally family me yes and I've known Chris gave me my start in the in the business in the whole nine, right? Me and Chris have only had two arguments in our entire like that's crazy like like yeah. union yeah. as manager, right? Yeah. This was our first argument that we ever had. So I don't want to. <laughs> they had a group, absolute uh, uh, a a new new time a group called Absolute. Yes, all right, and. If, I wish Jante was here because Jante was here. Crazy, Jante, come on the show. Let's Jonte get it. Would have <laughs> so much to say. Um, we just we had a joke. Me and Jante had a joke where Absolute was, you know, we had to give all our good songs to Absolute. Yeah, basically because we were really trying to get them off the ground. We were yeah. trying to get New Time the label off the ground. Yes, and Absolute had some good, sh- um, some good looks. Yeah, and some great songs too. Mm-hmm. Right, because they kept, we kept giving them our best shit. Yeah. And I remember uh, Brian called me, Brian Casey, twin called me like, yo, B, Jermaine Hurd, I don't want it, man. He want, this before me and Jermaine met. Jermaine Hurd, I don't want it, man. He want to make that shit the first single. Mm. So I'm like, okay, let's go. Hey, right? I'm excited as fuck. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, I don't want it's going to be Jagged Edge first single. Yep. Right? Go have the conversation with Ryan. Like, Ryan, hey. You know, Jermaine said it's going to be the first single. Let's make this deal. Whatever Jermaine's like, he's okay, cool. We're going to make the deal. Like an hour later, Chris calls me in the office like, hey, we're not, we're not giving that song to Jagged. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? So like, yeah, we're not giving that song. We, we're going to get that song to Absolute. I was like, come on, man. Don't put me in the middle of this shit. I was like, come <laughs> on, man. Come on. Who man. wrote it? Jagged. It was, it, was, it was Jagged. Brian and Brandon. No, but no, but no, Brian and Brandon, they, 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 were, they were on some bullshit too a little got bit. You. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to that got part you. of the story. <laughs> Um, um, 
I was like, come on, man. Like but you said Jagged Edge wrote it though. Jagged Edge. Yeah. Brian it's Brian and Brandon Casey twin. twin. Twins wrote it. You're right. So I'm like, I'm like, yo, and you give come it. on, man. Come on, man. Don't do this, man. This is an opportunity for me to have a real moment. Mm. Don't do this. For just me exactly. and Kev, man. Don't, yeah. This is opportunity for me and Kev, man. Don't yeah. do this. You know what I mean? Chris is like, nah, man. Absolute. It's gonna be Absolute's first single. We putting it out. And I'm like, man, I ain't feeling that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I ain't feeling absolute doing the song, man. I want Jagged to do the song. So then me and him start going back and forth. And then I guess he was getting really, really like uptight. He was like, B. Cox, you think that Jermaine Dupree is going to let you have a first single produced by you on his label that he ain't produced? You crazy. He just, we went, yeah. you know I mean? he went crazy yeah. on me yeah. in the meeting. Yeah. Right, were made. like you crazy. That's so so deaf. Every every artist he put out, he got the first single. Yeah, he's going crazy. I'm like, I'm still ain't feeling it, man. <laughs> yeah, I ain't I feeling that. I don't want to absolutely do this song. Right, we didn't get to we didn't get to a resolution that day. Three days later, Ryan comes to me. He's like, Yeah, man, that song the song is gone, man. I worked it out with Twin. The song, you know, we are gonna keep this song for absolute. So you worked it out with Twin. So basically, they paid. Brian and Brandon, some Songwriter. crazy amount of money. Like, mm-hmm. it was way more money than I got paid <laughs> uh, mm. for the song. And they ended up, absolutely ended up keeping the song. Mm-hmm. Right? Cool. Nigga, I was so upset mm. about that. Yeah. Because I was like, because I'm sorry, I'm sorry, me and Jermaine, we were already working. I'm sorry. Yeah. We were already working. We already made songs. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, like, <sighs> I'm gonna have a first single, but it's gonna be co-produced. You know, whatever the first single is gonna, cause I'm like, me and Jermaine had made three or four songs already. I'm like, fuck. I was so upset. I was like, nah. No. I'm gonna have the first single. Mm-hmm. No way. And we was Jagged Edge already out at this time? No, the, no, the, the first album was out, but we, we we just was working on Jay Heartbreak. Okay, got you. Second album. Mm. So. We, we, me and Brian and Brandon work every day, mm-hmm. right? We just writing for other people. We're working every day, so we're going to studio this day. I was like, "Hey, today, guys, we're making y'all first single." Mm-hmm. He was like, "Okay," and, you know. And I was like, cause I, find, "I was mad at them because yeah. I found out about the money." Yeah, they got paid. <laughs> so I didn't let them know that I yeah. found out money. about the money. Yeah. I just was like, "Okay, I'm just not going to trip." You just understand. You just get what it is, right? I, I get what I get, y'all. Okay, cool. I'm not tripping. I was really mad about the money. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to hold them against this. Like, like, it is what it is. I'm just grateful to be in a position to even have songs out and all that. I said, so cool. I said, yo, today we're going to make our first single. And literally, you know, we talked about what the idea was going to be. We made He Can't Love You. We made a song like 15 minutes, 20 mm. minutes. And I remember I knew the song was going to be something because every time the door would open, we were in B. Every time a door would open, People Lucky. would jump jump in like, what the fuck? <laughs> Fuck's going on in there? That sound crazy. What y'all doing in there? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Niggas yeah. come in, step in like, oh, oh shit. What the, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, okay, this shit going to be Yeah. It. And literally, we did the song and we did a rough mix. And then they went, they immediately took the dat, went to play it for, went to Jermaine's house, played it for him. JD was like, oh, I'm playing this at A&R Me tomorrow. This is the first single. Mm. And then they played it at A&R Me and Eddie was like, oh, yeah, nigga, this is it. We going yeah. with this now. Mix this today. Was that your first Jagged Edge single? Yeah. I, th- I always thought you did I Gotta Be. Also. I didn't do Gotta Be, no. I met, I met them in the middle of Gotta Be trending. Yeah. When gotta Be started blowing up. Mm. That's who wrote, I, I got, who got, who got to Be? That Manuel? was Jermaine, Manuel, and, Manuel Seal. And, uh, and the Twins. The Twins are really good writers. Right. That's, that's, what they, right. that's who they are. They're actually songwriters first. Mm. The Twins wrote, any Jagged Edge song you ever heard, is the Twins sense. wrote. Being songwriters, any, ja- any jagged edge song you heard, the twins wrote. That's crazy. Walked out of heaven, gotta be all them songs. Is the twins. So, the, what is the first record that? What is the first hit that you and JD had? Together? Let's get married. No, I'm sorry. Keys to the range. So the very first song, the very on the, first song on the I Into ever Deep did soundtrack. The, <laughs> the, the, yeah, the very first song me and Jermaine ever did together was that. So the first oh, day that. Wow. So when I I met him, and like a. Trina Broussard like showcase or some shit Chris Tucker used to have a club in Rio Mall if you from old Atlanta you know Rio Mall you sure. see on Ponce, Ponce de Leon and there was Chris Tucker had a club a comedy club 
in Rio Mall and Trina Broussard was who was signed as social deaf at the time was doing a showcase. So that's when I first met Jermaine and Big Bob and obviously mm-hmm. I like 97, 98, yeah. something like that, right? Um, and then Jermaine was like, yeah, I'm gonna call you. He called me like maybe a month later. Called me like, hey, you ready to come finish this Jagged Edge album? So I had no car. I had no car. I was broke. I was driving my girlfriend's car at the time. Shout out to that girl for getting you there. Oh yeah, I'm a go. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm at my big age. I'm always giving her props. Judith Franklin. <laughs> I know that's love. right. You know it. Give my oh he was on Aaron though. I was in love with that girl, boy. Aww. That was a whole nother thing. <laughs> that's another story so, for another day. So, so, <laughs> um, I had no car, and I remember Noonie and Terry. Oh no, everybody came. Y'all came. Noonie, Terry, Chris, and Ryan came. They all drove me to College Park. They drove me to Jermaine's house. And it was the first day. The first day we go in, Jermaine showing me around the studio like, yeah, so this, you know, whatever, whatever. And he's like, I got an idea for, we got to do this song for this. He was like, I'm in this movie, mm-hmm. In Too Deep, and I'm doing a song for it. I want to put Jagged Edge on this, on this soundtrack. Nice. He's like, cool. He's like, I got an idea already. So he's like, yo, he pulls out the Parliament record. And he starts like, like, you know, we, let's do something with this mothership connection shit. He's okay, cool. So he starts chopping little samples, and I'm over there trying to come up with the chord progression. And then it's like, and this is my Jermaine starts writing a hook to Keys to the Range. Mm-hmm. But in this point, Keys to the Range is, is a tempo record, so I'm yeah. like, he's writing it like a rapper. Yeah, right. He writes the hook. Jagger comes. They write the verses. Flip the hook a little bit, make it more R and B. The whole shit. Do the song fast. Mix the song the next day. This is the first time I've ever seen something like this too, where like do a song, mix a song, exactly. master a song. Exactly. Songs the single. You know what I mean? He's exactly. like Brian, you gotta follow me to New York to exactly. Sony. So my first time going to Sony in like the five fifty Madison, the oh. Bible School oh. Sony exactly. was with Jermaine. He took me <laughs> up there like after we did Keys to the Range, like go follow me to Sony. He took me up there to Sony to meet people and shit like that. And um and then he was like, yo, you ready to finish it? Are you ready to finish the Jacket Edge album? I was like, cool, exactly. we can finish it. Exactly. And he was like, yeah, because we already had a few songs. He was like, yo, I'm, I'm going to keep these songs. So Healing, what you're trying to do. Uh, Promise was already an idea mm-hmm. with, that, that he did with, with, uh, with, uh, with Bert and Gizzo, and I finished it. And then he was like, we're going to do it together. So then we flipped it. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. half the album was pretty much done, finished. Yeah. And then we did Did She Say, uh, Keys to the Range, and then we came back from New York, and he was like, yo, we got to do a, a ballad. We got to do a ballad for these niggas. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, what you want to do? I like, man, I want to do like a marriage song. I want to do a song about getting married or some shit. Mm. Who, I Who know says this? J.D. or? Jermaine. Okay. Jermaine. So I'm like, Smart. okay, cool. You know what I mean? Because apparently he was, you know, and Jermaine is very, he's a method writer. Mm. So it's like, What does that he, mean? Where like, it's, What's happening around him, he's directly right about. I like that. Like he's not mm. he's not a person that's like a Jermaine's not a person that's like an imaginary, like I'm gonna imagine something. Mm-hmm. Nine times out of ten, if he wrote it, either yeah, somebody it. told him a story, either he saw it or he experienced it. Exactly. Nine times out of ten. Exactly. He's not a person like I'm just gonna make up a story. Mm-hmm. Just write about which is why those songs are so dense yes. and so important. You know what I mean? Crazy. So he's like, I want to write a song about marriage. Man. I was, okay, cool. He's like, yo, we come with some church chords. Like, okay, cool. So I start playing some chord progressions. And he just starts singing like the hook. And I start laughing because I never heard him like singing like this. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> he's like, man, fuck you. It's, it's, it's going to be right when I get it done. <laughs> I like, okay, did, right. Is it true that he deletes all demos after the song gets I mean, back in the day he did. Not anymore. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> back in the day he did. Back in the day but he did. But not anymore. Not anymore. He, Clear he, you, You're going to get the Jermaine Dupree demo today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bruh, y'all, but back y'all, in those days. Y'all room was so legendary. Did you know? Give me a song that you did that you didn't know was going to be a hit and it became a hit. And then give me one that you did that you, you was knew was going to be a hit. <laughs> and it wasn't. And it wasn't. Wow, that's a good one. Wow. So, I can't. The first question, I can't. I can say that I was surprised. I'm not gonna say that I didn't doubt it was gonna be a hit, but I was very surprised at how big of a hit this was. Where the party at? Uh, I was really? surprised. That was a time. No that brainer. Was time I was surprised. Really? I was surprised. Uh, 
So which one did you think was going to go and use like, uh, I can't believe it hit? We did a record for Usher called uh, Fooling Around on mm-hmm. his Raymond versus Raymond album that I thought was going to be a hit. And that shit didn't see the light of day. <laughs> the record that me, John T, and Jermaine did called Fooling Around. I thought that shit was going to be, that shit felt good. I thought this shit going to be a hit. I'm going to put this out. This shit going to go. And that shit didn't see the light of day. <laughs> it did not do what you thought it was going to do. If you had to put together like a, a group today to save or to bring back R&B or the... Because well, you know I put together Day 26. Wow. I know that. Whole nother, yeah. that, that wow. We, uh, we didn't even got to that area yet. I was about to say. <laughs> if All right. So the conversation that we've been having about R&B being dead is kind of offensive, right? But if you had to put together some singers from today's R&B to make a super group that was going to save R&B, which huh. singers would you put together to today? make that mega group? Yeah, the today. Like the past, let's say, 10, 15 years, singers that debuted. Which singers would you put together to make a group that would oh, man. change the trajectory of R&B? Ooh. From a group. I mean, I can't. we can't put the people who's already saved R&B, so we can't. We have to eliminate people like Usher and things of that nature. Because they are Chris. Usher's keeping people, it alive. Chris people's keeping been, it alive. They've been around for 25, 30 years. We mm-hmm. can't bring them in. So we're going to say... Newer faces, yes, newer the newbies. Um, wow, I would say <laughs> is there anybody? <laughs> nah, I would say Luke James. Uh, just four. Four, right? You, like four, 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 three. Maybe like some new nine. edition shit. Maybe it's five new edition. So Luke James. Luke James, uh, Miguel. Oh, I, mm, that would be. A um, Ro James. Ro James is ill. Ro James. Ro James is ill. Um, got two more shit. <laughs> uh, can group some more. Black. <laughs> um, and. Last lot. Last one. Oh, that's your Jack Freeman, who's in the building right now. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, 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 Jack, Freeman. Jack Freeman. Jack Freeman's in the building. Jack Freeman, he's his own. Jack Freeman. So those are five I would, I would take to save R&B if I had to do it. What's so, the biggest distinction between today's R&B and like the R&B that we oh grew my up God. in? I could tell you the number one, the number one. Oh, I'm excited! Difference. Number you guys one, guys, ready? This, this is us. it for the this number one r- r- difference. Church. Oh, I did not think that's what you were gonna say. We done lost. Y- y'all getting further, further. R and B music. Mm. Keep telling. You. Always derived from the church. Mm. Mm. Jodeci. KC was was little was little Calvin. I never thought of that. And the Haley and the Haley singers. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh uh Devontae is Donald the Great. Um Dalvin is Dalvin the Great. The pastor the daddy is the great Reverend the Great. Carolinas that they used to fucking travel around the you know, nation singing spirituals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you get Jodeci out of that. Boys to men, church boys. You know what I mean, so when you if, say church, you mean the foundation, the structure, yes, going to what quiet. church brings. So listen, I, really I grew up in the church, right? Okay. As a musician, I got my chops in the church. Mm. As a singer, you get your chops and your performance skills as in the church. They can sing because you got to make them people feel the Holy Ghost. Mm, exactly, they got to feel. Hell it. yeah! Ooh. So you got to perform for them people. You know what I'm saying? You gotta catch the spirit when you start singing. Whitney Houston, church. Mm. Mariah Carey, grandmother's church. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like you're not Monica, church. Mm. You're not getting away from it. Mm. Mm. Jasmine Sullivan, church. The very That's first time I heard Jasmine vocalist. Sullivan sing ever. Yes. Mm. Ever. Kenny Ortiz, who's a legendary AR, you AR of RCA. He discovered SWV, he discovered the Neptunes. Mm. This guy doesn't get no credit because he was so behind the scenes. His name is Kenny Ortiz. Look him up. Okay? Kenny Ortiz came, 
to play an artist for me and for me and Jante. This artist, her name was Jasmine Sullivan. She was 13 years old. Wow. He we're at the Cheesecake Factory on Peachtree. This is when the old Cheesecake Factory. The nigga looks at me and Jante and tells us, yo, I got a 13-year-old that sings better than Kim Burrell. Now, do you know anybody where yes, Kim Burrell? Yes, for sure. Kim Burrell's legendary gospel singer from Houston, Texas. I am like, nigga, that is a blasphemous, bro. Yes. Mm. There's no way. Yes. He was like, I'm telling you, this girl is out singing everybody. Mm. Okay? Right. Get to the studio. I said, yo, we got, we got to, we, let's pay the bill. We got to go to the studio right now. You got to play me this shit. <laughs> yes. So I got a dad. You got to play it for me. Mm -hmm. Go back to noontime. We're in the A room. He puts the dad in. Plays the dad. And it is, you hear, you hear how young she is in her speaking voice. She's like, do I start now? I go, super, super young. But then she starts singing, except what God allows. Okay, you Clear the room. Bro. How? Unbelievable. Like, it's not, it's not even, it's, not even, it's the most unbelievable shit that yeah. I've ever experienced in my life. Yeah. Wow. As a producer wow. and like, yo. I've never heard nothing like this. She's 13. Yeah, they sneak her in, they sneak her in clubs. They're sneaking her in clubs mm. in Philly to do like open mic nights. She was getting snuck in the club. That's how good she was. So I'm like, yo, like all of that is church. Mm. You go all the way back to the Temptations, all the way back to the Ozzy Brothers, all the way back. It's all church. What we're lacking in R&B is that church? So when you church. say church, you mean kids from the church, kids going to church, kids participating all of in the church, all of that. Because we—that's where we got it from. Right, growing up in a choir. We growing up in a choir. You grow up. You, that's where we got it from. You know what I mean? Mm. Them are the best musicians. That's where we got it from. Mm. You learned your chord progressions at church. You didn't know what the fuck you was playing. Mm. You just was following whatever the piano player. Like, Show me that chord. Mm, How did point. you hit that? You go from here to here to here. He's not telling me that that's a so and so chord goes to that song. He's just like, yo, play these chords, mm -hmm. and, and you go right. home. You're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna practice these five chords for the next week. Mm. That's you crazy. know what I mean? Yeah. I'm gonna go practice this run. Oh my god, I just went to church and I heard so and so and so. I'm gonna practice this for the. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Groups like Commission and the Winans and. That's where we get our shit from. Exactly. Best vocalist. Best vocalist. Like of like, all time? I, I don't know if I want to do it. You got, you, uh, you got, you got, you got, you got, you can't ask, can't I ask people to, like It's a hard question. question. Yeah, it's hard because, for me. Because well, reason, I want to know new school because you, you, you said my, one of my favorite singers nowadays is Jasmine Sullivan. So like, like that voice She's is my favorite. different. So like, it is hard because like, it's well, like no, no, it's not hard for us to say, but from his perspective, I'm, he's so goaded in the R&B right, world. So that's kind of like blasphemous to ask him. Yo, who's, who's your who's favorite? The best singer? He's like, because I have so many. Well, I mean, you gotta understand, like, R. Kelly. I mean, you gotta understand, Usher, Mariah, Mary. Mm -hmm. We just brought up three that he yeah. has massive hits with. Yeah. So it's a hard one. It's a hard one because Mariah is. I mean, people. You know, I think people forget or forgot. The whole how career. good right. Mariah Carey is. I'm I, I want to ask you. You know what I'm saying? Like, like how know. really fucking the good range, she is. Everything. Like literally, the type of songs. If like, you are, I'm there were fine. only two people you were talking about in that era. Whitney, and Mariah. in that space, we're three. But you, are, as a as a black man, it was only two. Got you. You know what I mean? Celine Dion was. Celine other was the third, but yeah. I don't know. I, you know, I, I didn't really. Yeah. You know, I think she's an incredible singer, but I didn't really. That you wasn't my that vibe. That wasn't your ecosystem, so you didn't exist with. Whitney her. Houston, Mariah Carey, we ain't talking about nothing else. Yeah. Agreed. That's my. What are we talking about? So, so for Mariah to be in that space, like when she came out the gate, Whitney was eight years in. Mm. Mariah came out in nineteen ninety. Oh. You know what I mean? Whitney Houston's first album, when it was five years in, mm. Whitney's first album came out in 1985. You give good love and save all my love for you, all them records, how will I know, 85, 87, Mariah comes out in 1990. As the voice. First album. She's already in the talk Every with album. Whitney? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I agree. I mean, I agree. Like, no arguments. Yeah. You can't, you know what I mean? I want to ask you, what was the, what was the easiest record y'all made and 
outside of Mary J. Blige, Be yeah. Without You, what was the hardest record you had to get to the finish line? Uh, the easiest record I ever made. The hit record, by the way. The easiest right. hit record I ever made was... Uh, hmm. It's a good one. The easiest hit record I ever made, I would go with, I would say... Burn was like, was the easiest hit record that me and Jermaine's ever made. Why was it so easy? Because it was just a conversation. Mm. I had no business. So, like so what happened was, was my life. Story. What I learned early working <laughs> with Jermaine and like. Usher specifically was that the song is in the conversation. So the first song that me and Jermaine and Usher ever did together Learned was was you got it bad. Yeah, and that song came pretty easy. Yeah, but it was like through three hours of conversation, four hours mm-hmm. ago. Burn was just. I wish there was somebody filming that the way me and Jermaine were writing that song. Cause it just, it was the easiest song that I've ever been a part of as far as like writing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I hit record, like knowing it was going to be a hit too. Like, Oh nigga, we wrote this song in 15 minutes, 20 Mm -hmm. minutes. It's a hit. You know what I mean? Like it was that kind of, you know what I mean? Um, the hardest song, (laughs) The new ones. <laughs> <laughs> the new ones that are the hardest ones uh, because it's just getting people to understand and wrap their mind around what what we do and who we are. Mm. Um, I think that it's come so easy in the past that I think that a lot of times people look at myself and look at Jermaine and they just undermine our thought, our, 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 our process. Mm. Um, and it's always like, get this one to do the beat over. Get this one to add drums to this one. Get this one to add, you know. We never made records like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I, by the way, I hate that part of the game. Um, but it's tough because that's the way people make records now. Exactly. Mm. And, and, and me being even working at LVRN, I gotta mm-hmm. under, as an A&R, I got to understand how that works too. You know what yeah. I mean? Um. As a producer, as an A&R, I understand it. As a producer, it's frustrating as fuck. Mm. What's the difference in a hat? Like, in your, like what's the difference? As an A&R, I under, I, I'm not responsible for, for creating the music. I'm just responsible for getting, it out there. getting, getting making sure the music is a, is a hit. Yeah. And putting the equation together. So I have to respect, I respect the A&R. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So even if it's as a producer, it, it helps me as a producer because like even things I don't want to do, I'll do because I understand if I'm in on and I want to get it to the finish line properly, let's figure this, let's figure all this out. Yeah. But as a producer, if you're asking me for something specific, mm-hmm. you don't know how we got there the first time, mm. second time, third mm. time, fourth time. Wow. You don't know. Because you're in the room. You have no idea how yeah. we got there. Mm-hmm. You heard it after. Mm-hmm. You have no idea what it took for us to get no, to burn. Yeah. What it took for us to get to confessions. What yeah. it took for us to get to let's get married. Mm-hmm. What it took for us to get to be without you. What it took for us to get to break us like stingy. You have no idea. Mm. Right? So as a producer, it's frustrating to hear somebody who don't know. Like I'm an animal who understands all of it. That's what makes you dope at it. Right. You can understand. Like, I understand how. Clap, add yeah. This, like, hi, yeah, the hi-hat is all, as all a, those things. If you, it's frustrating as fuck. And, and specifically when you have made large records on a particular artist and you get undermined by that artist. Or, or not, let me phrase that. You get undermined by the team of that artist. Mm. Right. And it's like, y'all not hot. Or that sounds dated. Or let's get so and so and so to do such and such and such. It's it's a real gut punch to the ego. Mm-hmm. That that's where that like you you say where humility. I, I'm super humble and humility, but that's where the ego comes in at because it's like bro or sis, <laughs> whichever <laughs> one I'm talking to. You don't even understand how we got to that record. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't even know the DNA of that shit. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You want this shit to sound, you know, we gotta make it sound like 2023. But when we were making those records in 2002, we weren't thinking about 2010. 
Mm-hmm. We were thinking about the best record we can make right. today. Yeah. And what lyrically is going to move the needle and make people feel something. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck about the beat. Mm. I don't give a fuck about the slang. I don't give a fuck about, you know what I mean? Yeah. What's going on in 2023 and niggas is lit and all that. I don't give a fuck <laughs> about none of that shit. Mm-hmm. If we writing heart, heart-wrenching shit, it don't matter. But but they don't they don't care about the today the song is irrelevant and that's why the business is suffering so much. Like what is the We comment? care about the song. Me and Jermaine still right, the song care is about the, most the song. Important bro. Thing because the song is your messaging. It's almost yeah. like your campaign message. Like, what do you want to tell the world? Yeah. And if they're in the room saying we just want this shit to hit, it's like who like I'm always like, who's it for? Where does it go? When does it go? How like wh- if I'm in that moment, when am I gonna play it? So and what are we chasing? Yes, exactly. Ooh, that's the question. Like, what, like I would, Who I would, even, I would even switch it up and say, what are we trying to attract? Yeah, because what? true. I was because yeah, I feel like what are we trying to? You're attract? really putting the song down, so hoping that up. the people come. comes to it and yeah. say that's yeah. for me. Yeah. I love your point of view, so I'm super excited to get yeah. to one of the games that we're gonna yeah. play. So Ray, tell them about the game we so got. So we have this game that we play, and it's called. It's, I'm sorry, I just called the cut. No, it's called making the cut. Making the cut. Okay. Making the cut. <laughs> and and what we do is we give you three options, and you have to pick one and make one. You sign one, you put one in development, and one you gotta cut. Okay. You gotta say the names, and if you don't wanna, if you want, if it just gets too hard, you can be like, donate twenty dollars to a kids fund to a okay. kids nonprofit. Fair. It's called the Creative Academy. All the kids. We have three, two kids, two or three kids from the academy that actually won Grammys, nice. and it's a music program that we put together that you know for young producers and writers and creatives and everything like okay. that. So, so everybody wins. So, so nobody wins. loses. Nobody loses, but right. it gets kind of fun though. Let's go. Let's it gets have some really, fun. really fun. Oh, I'm. Oh, this is like. This I already is know that. This is important. Nah, I got a good one. This is a good one. Uh oh. We're gonna go here. See, Ray, I, I, Ray. I tell you, my guy Jackson's <laughs> options, and I'm like, man, this is this this the one. So I'm going to start here. Okay. Mary J. Blige, Mm -hmm. Mariah Carey, Janet Jackson. Wow. I do not want to be in your seat. Okay, what is it? You have to to sign sign one. Develop. You have to develop develop one. one. You have to cut one. Or you got to donate. Mariah Carey, Janet Jackson. Or you can donate $20 to the kids. Or or Mary J. Blige? Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh man! You the head of your own record label. These three are in front of you. Who you signing? Oh wow! Who you developing? Who you cutting? I gotta donate the money because twenty dollars for the kids. Twenty dollars for the kids. I mean, this. I mean, first this so legendary in so many ways. Like you know what I mean? Like Janet, you know, everybody's first love and all that crazy shit. And then you get a chance to work with her. Yeah. Like I mean, Jimmy and Terry is like the reason why I produce records. Like you can't. You know, okay, well Mary listen, J. Blige is Mary. Get, we about to get into. We just getting Let's started. Go. You ready? Right, if the I'm, first I look, one got you, you ready? Like, like my pay, like my checkbook gonna be. I already know. Listen, up. listen. Let's go. Let's New edition. Jodeci, boys, the men. Okay, I would sign Jodeci. I would. No, I'm sorry. I would sign New Edition. I would develop Jodeci. Boys and twenty dollars. <laughs> Ah, Forty dollars, <laughs> man. I ain't going there. I ain't going there. Yeah, boys to men. We're almost happy there. I was like, we cutting boys to men. Hold on. We're not cutting boys to men. All right, right this, one, this one can feel easy, but let's focus on the music. Let's focus on the music. Oh, oh Lord. Usher, music only. Music only. Usher, Chris Brown, R. Kelly. Oh. <laughs> oh. Music only. I I, I, I <laughs> I, <laughs> I gotta say that. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Um, damn. R. Kelly's been coming up a lot in these fucking podcasts I've been on. <laughs> I know R and B. You can't really talk about R and B without talking about him, I'm, right? I get. It's I guess. Hard to avoid. Um. I mean, obviously, you would sign Usher. It's not really obvious. That's what we asking you. All the obvious, really. <laughs> you all the obvious. God damn it. All of it. $20, man. Uh, $60 for the gifts. I'm not going to drill you too hard, dude, because I already know. $20. I already know. Oh, this is a good one. No, that's not. That's not a good one. Hey, let, me say, let, me just, let me just backtrack a little bit. I know people, I know I'm going to get a little flack, but here's the deal. I grew up in the 90s. Like, 
That's literally 50% of the music. Right. Kelly. This, that's literally 50% of the R&B music. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't, so I don't praise it. I don't, impact? you know, I don't, I ain't really fucking with, you know, I don't, I don't fuck with what he did and mm-hmm. all that shit. But, you know, I graduated high school in 1996. Mm-hmm. If you were around during that era. Mm-hmm. That's all you was listening to. Fifty percent of the music, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's fifty percent of the black music. It's like it's, know. Right, it is what it is. Music, like at that point, music. it's like <laughs> fuck him, fuck what he did. He deserves to be wherever he is. Cool, but, but the reality. Shit. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna make it a little easy. Can't deny the music. I'm gonna make it a little easy for you. Confessions, uh-huh. the emancipation of Mimi, mm. or the breakthrough. That's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me figure it out. It's not easy. It's not easy. Oh man, I really want to give it. I want to give you a proper answer. I don't want to keep. I mean, I'll, I'll keep giving gotcha. money too, <laughs> but I want to really give gotcha. you a proper answer. The breakthrough, confessions, emancipation. These are three of the most important albums of that like three year period, yep. a five year period, really you got a hits, decade. You got the really of the decade. Of you got the biggest from two thousand to two thousand ten. Those are three of the most important albums of that decade. Well, Twenty five years, right? Probably. Um, can't do it. Uh, Twenty, eighty for the kids. The kids are winning. But that goes to show how much he really loves and respects the music. Like can't when you it. can't pick, you just respect everything. Yep. I mean, and but, but, but I'm, I'm tricked because he has the biggest single. Yeah, all, all, all of them. Albums. And those albums made me like literally at the end of that decade. I was like. The number two producer of all time of the know, decade, that right. decade, number one songwriter of that decade because yeah. of like those albums. You know what I mean? Like, how can you choose? How can I choose? <laughs> those albums made it's a trick. People question. know who Brian and it was ill is even in the midst of all that. Like, I still was able to keep a low profile and still mm. be cool and mm. still be. You know what I mean? Because I got like you know Ray, you know me. Like yeah, you, 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 it's it? about the music, nigga. Yeah. It ain't about none of the other shit. Always been a purist. That's what I love about yeah. you the most. So that was intentional, keeping the low profile, saying out the way. Hell yeah, because absolutely. Like the there was one moment where I tried to be like, I'm gonna jump out. <laughs> that way you bought the Bentley. It was, it was being loud. No, 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 the Bentley was my shit. Yeah. I bought a <laughs> Bentley. No, the Bentley was. A- I bought the Bentley because I wanted the Bentley. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't me trying to be loud. It was like, mm-hmm. it was like I, it you know, I had some success. Jaha and Chris had bought me this this watch, and it was like Jaha was like, "Yo, man, what kind of car you want?" And I was we we, we actually went test drove at Aston Martin to one of them uh, one of them, one of them sports car Aston yeah. Martin joints. And I was like, I'm not a sports car kind of guy. And Jaha was like, "Yo, I'm gonna take you to the Bentley dealership tomorrow." Mm. And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> let's go to the Bentley dealership." Exactly. <laughs> we went to the we went to the Bentley y'all dealership. Was, you and your team was like that. Hey, shit was, was like that how y'all was, y'all was moving. It was y'all yeah, was out in that It was beautiful, man. A beautiful time, and I feel like you know when you're young, you have to experience that kind of shit. You know, before you know, like hey, even though they were trying been to there, done that. Yeah, been there, done that. For sure, we have exactly. been there, done that. All right, I got a, I got a couple more. Uh, you in sports? Yes. Okay, LeBron, Kobe, Michael Jordan. Oh wow, that's a great one. Mm-hmm. So that's what I said. That's what I said. I'm not asking you just it's music. One. It's everything. So sign, Le- oh no, sign LeBron. No, I'm sorry. Sign Kobe. Sign Kobe. Oh, no, Somebody's got to go. This ain't your world. You got to answer this. This ain't your world. <laughs> right, oh, right. Put a, put a, put a, put a, let me. Because I appreciate Kobe in such a different yes. way now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But let me answer as if this was. You know, yep. when it's your they team. Playing, right? Would sign Michael. Okay. Okay. Develop LeBron. Cut Kobe. Kobe's out of here, buddy. He got to go. I'm only saying that Brian Michael Cox 2005. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Michael Cox 2023. Different I mean, story. I have a I have such a different appreciation for Kobe Bryant. Yes. I mean, I, I, mean I, I got to meet him after he retired. And mm-hmm. Like I have such a different appreciation for him. I wasn't really a huge Lakers fan coming up. So, Me neither. You know what I mean? Um, um, but in their height, uh, you know, I would have been like, man, peace out, Kobe. Especially, you know, yeah, I would have been like, peace out. All right, we're going we're gonna to go back to your world now. 
Thank you, please. <laughs> SWV. Jesus. TLC. <laughs> escape. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that came from the chest. Uh, Fuck. You guys think SWV, TLC, Escape. Wow. Sign. SWV. Cause I'm just an R&B nigga through and through. I'm gonna say, boy, that that, you know that is that, that. But see, this is why I like the, the question because you can answer from your perspective. Nigga. But you giving your like, I would rather hear you do an SWV song over all. Both I'm of just them. an R&B nigga through and through. Coco is you know Brian Morgan. Them you know that's just it's nothing better than that shit. Oh. You got too loud. My soul is telling me. <laughs> Not my soul. Get me out. Who was competing here? My soul is telling me <laughs> develop escape that's what your soul because of who I am as a uh-huh. songwriter. That actually makes sense, by the way. Right? That's- like, I would have songs on SWV and Escape's album. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have any songs on TLC. Because TLC's exactly. more poppy. Okay, okay. I, I'm going to go a little. We're going to go there. So we drop in. I would drop TLC. Okay. But that makes sense because Ian Burke. Now, even, numbers. But no, no, but numbers. Ian, but Ian Burke even said it. He said TLC is more of a pop poppy. group. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. Numbers, I get people like, yo, Kaj, you drop. And I love Tiana and Chili. They're but my people. Stand, but you stand true to your brand. But I, and granted, I, I, I would have an opportunity to write for TLC too. But naturally, I'm talking about. When those rec- when those groups came out, mm-hmm. TLC was fun, 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 and that shit was for me like fun. You know what I mean? But I didn't. The seriousness for me was SWV was serious was about business. Voices. Escape was serious business for me. Like oh mm-hmm. shit, you know what I mean? It matches the brand. I want to write track. songs yeah. for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I, but I love Tiana Chili, and I, I love Tiana is too. one of the realest Tiana, you know, artists I've I ever met in my life. I like, love them. Tiana and don't play. What's happening? I'll do anything for them to this day. My people. All right, I'm 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 gonna make I'm gonna give you two more. Uh-oh. Uh oh. I'm gonna take it easy, cause what I don't want to do is stop the money from flowing your way. <laughs> Please don't. Yeah, I don't want nobody getting nobody mad. Everybody, get mad at you. It's everybody's so emotional. It's all fun and games. Everybody's so emotional. I don't understand why people take things so personal, cause it's just music has always just been subjective, bro. Subjective, man. It's like 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 I'm I'm not a serious Wu Tang fan. And people be like, what? So, no, so, no, like, Ray, let me I'm tell you some real shit, right? Though. Let me tell you, let me tell you, Ray, mm-hmm. you from Atlanta, yep. right? So let me tell you something. I think anybody from the South, right? I'm from Houston, Texas, mm-hmm. right? I remember when Wu-Tang Clan came out. I went to Foreman House High School, collected kids. at a friend, um, what is this nigga's name? Quentin, Quinn mm-hmm. Boutte. Quinn Boutte, he had a sister named Reagan who was in my class. Quinn Boutte. We all rode the bus. We live in the same neighborhood, rode the bus together, right? We always have like a boombox in the, in the back of the mm-hmm. bus. My boy Berto would have the boombox, and people bring tapes, and they play whatever, right? Quinn Boutte gets on the bus, right? He, You know, light-skinned dude with wild dreads, light <laughs> eyes, big clothes, you know, straight <laughs> New York style, want to be New York type shit. Comes on the bus. He's like, yo, play this. And it's, a, a cassette single, so all white cassette single. Side A of the white of the cassette single is um, is Wu Tang Clan, nothing to fuck with. Yep. And on the B side is Method Man, M E T H O D Man. Right. Those are the- so listen, listen. So he plays. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with, right? So we're here in Houston, right? This is early in the morning. It's like 7.30 in the morning. He plays this shit. <laughs> Niggas like, man, cut that shit ah, off. Yo. The no. fuck, yo. Hey, dog. Hey, dog. Hey, 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 dog. Cut that shit off, dog. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say something. I got to say something. B, B, I got to say something. I swear to God. He's like, hey, man, cut that shit off, dog. Hey. The fuck is that, dog? I don't like that. I, re- I remember ninth grade in the locker room and it was, uh, and. All these Atlanta guys was were reciting Wu Tang lyrics like what well, Method Man said, blah, blah. and I was looking at them like, the mind you, I'm this '94, I moved to Atlanta '91, yeah. So I'm like, I'm th- I, I should have been on the Wu Tang, yeah. Thing. <laughs> but by this time, I'm loving Kilo was, and Atlanta. You're straight, you're straight Atlanta, so I'm Atlanta now. Straight ATL. And then, like, Wu-Tang, He's been and I'm converted like, by then. Man, that's no complicated you, shit. But let me I will tell say this though: as a, as I became more as of a I got man, older, yes, I can appreciate, appreciate it. it. I will tell you this: when they flipped the tape. 
and we heard the and and I love M-A-T-H-O-D, Method Man. H O D man. Niggas okay, we fucking with that. I was like, play that nigga. Don't ever play Wu Tang Clan. Ain't no fuck with ever again. Yeah, and the niggas is like the Jizzle, the Rizzle, the Ghostface Killer. I'm like, who needs to sound like of the Avengers? No, my nigga. Like, who are these? I'll never forget it. But what's crazy is what's crazy is that eventually. Throughout the year, like that, that was like the first time I ever heard Wu Tang, yeah. right? Then Thirty Six Chambers comes out, and I I feel like I feel like the RZA I feel like the RZA knew that the South wasn't fucking with him, <laughs> and the RZA made Cream. Yes, oh. now, that Cream was, is that some. Was, that was a that is the record, record that we was shifted fucking with the South. Yes, niggas in the South. Yep. Cream is what shifted niggas in the South. And, like, and another thing that was, nothing even though they love, I think they also figured out, use Method Man. Because yeah. niggas in the South love Method Man. Yeah. So they, watch niggas the rap, in, niggas get all up in your oh, guts. Oh, <laughs> fuck But the record's fire, though. That record's yes, fire, though. they had us fucked up. But, but, First but, one that was, above pecan, chocolate Once they the realized luck. niggas in the South love Method Man, yes. we're going to lean in. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? I really feel like they knew that. It was like, yo, because I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to tell you, that, I, that Quentin had the original... Wu Tang Clan and I fuck with cassette single. It was all white. It was like the Wu Tang logo on the front. And I remember, like, yo, we're gonna play this shit. Yo, play this shit. And he put that shit in. And all, I mean, all, cause we all from the Southwest. We're from the South Side. But the bus was bus picked up from the South Side of Houston. So niggas was like, man, if you don't cut that shit off, dog, oh man, what the fuck? No, <laughs> niggas went crazy on that man on the bus yeah. at like seven in the morning. <laughs> I already know that. I was like, and I, was like, I know that guy. And I was He's like, in the South, but he dressed like he's from New York. No, yeah, 100%. I, I went to school he had the, the dress, dress. He had the dress. Yeah. He had the, yes. had the fishnet. The fishnet. Like um, Look like The fishnet uh, yeah. vest on. Yeah. The Jinko jeans. With the them, motherfucking. I, I, uh, I know them guys. The fucking Doc Martens. And he hitting that shit. You know what I'm saying? No there was another nigga that was out of school, a nigga named Frank that was like that too. That nigga was freestyle. He the always one of them. That's the one thing about the South that I will say. There was uh, always yo. a and there was always a New Yorker, straight New Yorker. There was always them in the South. It was yo, always, it was, always it was always a group of niggas that was like, yo, nigga, what's up, yo, son? Yo, yo, the yo. motherfucking I hate when y'all do New York The fucking shit in their mouth, the fucking chew oh, stick in their mouth. Yo, and what's and up, and B? And then, and then, and then, and then they, and, My ears are and then they was like, yo, and nigga, was like, you are from Third Ward, nigga. Nah, and, then, and then you got, <laughs> and then listen, and the B, you listen to the record, it's like, I keep, I fucking, I fucking, I fucking, I fucking put your stab foot, you I stab you in your fucking, fucking wound. And I'm like, who wants who? to listen to this? Yo, listen. We are fucking 14. I'm gonna keep it real. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it real, dog. And I was like 16. Yeah. I was like, yo, I remember being like, yo, this is too much, man. This is a lie. And I'm gonna keep it real. I don't know what I got going on in New York. I always tell people man Puffy was the ultimate equalizer he was the equalizer mm. Puffy was the equalizer That's a good way to look at crazy. It. Puffy was the guy that leveled the playing field when it came to New York shit in the 90s because I was a fan of Puffy before I knew who Puffy was Father MC treat him like they want to be treated Father M- Puffy was executive producer of Father MC's album. That was his first. That was his first executive producer credit. This is before Jodeci, before Mary, before all that shit. His first executive producer credit was Father MC, and Father MC for us, Uptown Records represented mainstream. It wasn't like it wasn't undigestible. Heavy D guy. That shit was the shit. So that's what I viewed New York as. Exactly. Right? The early 90s come and it gets super grimy. It gets Nas. It gets dark. Nas. <laughs> as I said before. before, Wu-Tang, before yeah. It gets fucking dark. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck is this? But then Puffy equalizes that shit, man, with fucking Biggie, man. He made it digestible. Bro, don't I tell you He brings Biggie like, and Biggie. Like, I, like, I, say, I say, you know what I say, B? I say, he 94 equalizes was a it. year that hip-hop changed. It was... Illmatic drop for the lyrical, schmirical, you love lyrics, guys. It really changed in 92, before. Who, who, who changed it in 92? Dr. Dre changed it before well, everybody changed it. He was on the West changed. Coast, though. But I'm saying, but I'm saying yeah. he, he fucked it up to a place where East Coast niggas was like, oh, we got to fucking... Like, he changed it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Dr. Dre changed it. The Chronic changed everything. Ooh, sure did. No, he did. It did. But the niggas on there, but, but from the right, East Coast... But, 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 I, I, but on the East Coast... We got to give... But, I'm, 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 and, and not only that, when you 14 in Atlanta... 
California feels so, so far, far away. That's a See, good California point. wasn't that far, far from Houston for yeah, us. Yeah, but for me, from California Atlanta, culture was, is very instrumental in Houston culture. Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't go 100%. to California beat till I was like 27. I agree. Like mm-hmm. for the first time, like 26, I was in probably mm-hmm. California felt far. 2006 though. is the first time I ever went to California. Ray, I'm gonna keep it real. California kept felt far. <laughs> no bullshit. I mean, it didn't feel as far as Atlanta. <laughs> Because in Houston, Calif- we adopted a lot of California culture in Houston, mm, right? But y'all, but y'all are like in the Southwest. We were in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. In the middle. So we had niggas. Like I was super big as my favorite rapper back then and to now. You know what I mean? But then you had niggas who was on, we was on Two Short, Spice One, yeah. NWA. Yep. Like we was on all that West Coast yep. shit too. Yeah, we were. But Heavy. Then, we was down here. Like Master P was that for us. So in Atlanta, Master P, Master P, P was the reason why we started Exactly. He's he's Houston basically. Master, for us. Exactly. Master P you know was the reason why we Cash started Money's Houston to basically for us. West Coast music yeah. because outside of Dre, Master P did South Southwest players. Oh no, he was and Master he had P. bounce that ass, bounce that ass. <laughs> you hold bounce that ass. Was over joint? KT uh, on there. Freak ho. Yes. Freak ho. Freak, freak ho. Oh, that's Master, Master P. Master Hell. That Master P. What? Yeah. That yeah. Shit need to be remade. That's Y'all Percy. Asher, Big Percy. B, did you ever did do hit a hit with a rapper? Yeah. Which one? Um, I mean, I did Bow Wow. I mean, I don't know if they all consider that. I'm not going to count Bow Wow. Isn't that um, nice? No. No, 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 no. Bow Wow no, no. ain't no, like no, no. R&B singers. No, hear me out. Listen, I'm not disrespecting, but I'm, I'm saying Bow Wow was- Bow Wow was hip-hop, man. Let's not, let's not do that. He's right. not- No, no. I'm, let's not no, do no, that. No, no. Bow Wow's a hip-hop. No, Bow Wow's the youngest nigga yeah. outside of Chris Criss Cross. He's a hip-hop nigga, Can I say why I say- Can I say why I'm trying to get you? See, I'm not saying Bow Wow's not hip-hop. Yeah. Let me tell you why I'm saying Bow Wow doesn't count in this. No, let me just hear me out. Because Bow Wow was created by you guys. That's a good one. So, I, so I'm, yeah. I'm, ta- I'm talking, but I'm talking about B like walking it. in the room it. with a rapper who's like, yo, B, give me a beat. Give me that beat. Like, you know what I mean? Somebody mm-hmm. who's in the room collabing with you. You guys So let me tell you what's ill, right? Let me tell you what's ill, right? Mm-hmm. I would always want to work with a hip-hop, hip-hop artist mm-hmm. and never get an opportunity because people always viewed me as an R&B guy. That's why. Right. And as I'm sitting the there, that's what you The very first that. guy that ever gave me an opportunity to do that was Jadakiss. Wow. I did a song for Jada Kiss like three years ago you called did. New York. You did. You did. That's when I was at Jada, Jada was Kiss like was the first guy in New Yorkers. to say, Produce me. B Cox, you know what this, like, you know your shit. Fine. Yeah. Get embarked. Let me tell you what's ill. How did that even happen, right? I was doing lives. This is mm-hmm. before pandemic. Before the, I always do lives, me making beats or mm-hmm. random shit. And I was chopping a sample on live. I was chopping a people with Bryson oh, sample. He- and Bart texted me when I was chopping it. Bart was like, yo, let me get that for Jada. That's the shout out to Bart. And I, I was Bart like, because I was, let me tell you what's crazy. I was working on a project. Shaka had an artist. What was his name? Oh my God. Drawing a blank. He was a, a rapper. Why am I drawing a blank? I was doing a project for this kid and I forgot his name. But, but Shaka had a kid that was from Atlanta. And he was a hip hop dude. What is his name? Jesus Christ! I know all of their artists too. From Atlanta he ended up going to TDE. He was with Shock and ended up going to TDE. I need to my Scram Jones. No, not Scram Jones. Yeah, no, but Ray had the name. no, it's another person. Go through the computer. Go through huh? the computer. Nah, no. Oh, why can't remember his name, man? I know. Oh, all I'm sorry. Guys. I'm sorry, y'all. I got. I we, I got to give him his props. I don't want to do this. And not give him his props. Hold on, hold on. Come on, Ray. And he went to TDE. Go the computer, Ray. Hold on, he went to TDE. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I did Sunday, Sunday. Nick Grant. Nick Grant. Uh, Now everybody knows Nick Grant. Yes. I was doing, me and Nick Grant had met and connected. By the way, I just want to correct her real quick because I was telling her because she knows I'm a machine. Nick Grant wasn't signed to DTP. Oh, it was actually He was actually signed to Shaka and um, Jason Jeter. Jason Jeter. He was both of their artists. They had another they, they had company. Another company called said, Re- and, and Bernard Parks. And a company, company called Republic. Co- Republic. Come that on, was the man. Company. I know. I was the like, computer works. Yeah. I'm thinking about DTP. I'm like, <laughs> so, yo, no, Nick Grant <laughs> and I met and really connected, right? And on music and on like Saturday morning music, Sunday morning, I was like, yo, let's do a fucking EP that's based on the music that we grew up hearing, you know, grew up our parents playing. Exactly. And I started chopping samples for Nick Grant, right? So I go on my live and I'm like, yo, I'm chopping a sample for Nick Grant. And I start chopping this people sample. And um, Bart hits me like, yo, I need that for Jada. Mm. 
And I'm like, oh, I'm working on Nick. This is for Nick Grant. I love, so, so I was stalling Bart for a minute. Yeah. Cause I wanted to, I wanted to see what Nick was gonna do first. So yeah. I sent Nick all the ideas, and Nick really never got back with me. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't yeah. know if he was fucking with. It. I don't know what yeah. was going. He never really got back. So then, like maybe three or four months later, Bart calls my like, yo dog. What's up with that beat, nigga? Let me let me get that beat. Oh wow, for Jada, give me that beat. And I was like, I'm gonna send it to you now. Yeah, and I sent it to Bart, and then like maybe three weeks later, Jada calls my like, yo nigga. I'm I'm, I'm I'm about to get on this beat. You know, mm-hmm. okay, cool. I didn't hear nothing else mm-hmm. for a while. And then next thing I know, I get a text. And Jay's like, yo, listen to this. Mm. It was fucking Jada. wrecking me. Oh, yeah. And he was like, yo, I'm putting this shit out. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Love you know it. what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was just. That's a nice surprise. So that I opened my relationship with me and Jada up. So now me and Jada are actually doing a project together. Oh Love wow! That. Ooh, By that's the way, gonna I be said, insane. I, I'm, 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 I have yeah, a clip. This, this, this is a, a speaking about you guys got the exclusive. Ooh, Let's just do the project. We have to do the project together boom, now boom, boom, boom. because of that. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna just give you one more. Sound. No. I'm gonna make it really hard because why not? Make it hard, man. Why not? Let's talk. Michael Jackson, Prince, Beyonce. Oh, oh Jesus! That is not. You said make it hard. Oh. That's the last one. <laughs> Um, so and you got to answer. No, we $20. up to eighty dollars. It's take like the you know, twenty dollars off the table. Look at your man. Look at no, man. No, we're not man. doing that. We <laughs> y'all going to take this twenty dollars? Hundred dollars for the kids. Yeah. By the way, by the way, so, take this so, so so I just want to tell you. I, I want to tell you something because Beyonce. Let me tell you something, and I've been saying this all for the past two weeks. Her show, my nigga, <laughs> incredible sanity, is, I mean, outside of what Usher does in Vegas, it's only her and Usher, bro. I feel the same way. There's nobody better. I feel the same way. Beyonce is, like, if anybody got something to say about her from a negative perspective, they are. it, it is pure hate. For sure. There's no way, there's no way mm. you can watch her progression, watch her grow, watch where she's been and where she's going, and watch this show and not say that she's the best. I agree. There's no way. So I'm so, talking about. There's no way. Got you. No, no, I agree. With I'm, you, I'm talking right? about songs or songs. I get it. Yeah, there are people who got better songs. Cool, I get it. Right, we got her, better catalog. She's. But I'm talking girl. about just her as an artist, as a performer, bro. We haven't seen nothing like this since them days. I agree, and I don't think we you know ever will because of how the game is set up. Because you can't be hard on people like Matthew knows and play. But Matthew, <laughs> first of all, Matthew's my nigga. Matthew's a been a wild nigga. <laughs> he don't play. Matthew don't fuck around. <laughs> I love okay? that. Matthew don't fuck around. That's Shout my out to brother. Dancing and singing. But yeah, so by, by the way, everybody get for B Cox. He played <laughs> Making a Cut. So Making a Cut is presented. Making a Cut. My bad. Making a Cut is sponsored by an app called The Cut, uh, okay. where you can get your hair cut. You know, just like set up set up a appointment, appointment and shit. anywhere in the world. But because you play the game. The cut is going to give you a card where you get free haircuts for a year, wherever you want to go. That. Fire. Beautiful. Anywhere in the world you want to go. I want to grow my haircut. beard back out, so I need Uh-oh. somebody to, to, to they, take well, care well, of that. Well, 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 well we happen. got you. You're going to have a, you're going to have a, you're going to have a, I've been shaving my beard. Like, I want to grow my shit out. But I want to make sure somebody got my shit right. Jack, make sure we get with B to get his info so we can send it over. So, yeah, so we have a. It's going to be gray ladies. It's going to be super gray ladies when it grows out. So, listen, you got, listen, bro. I like it. I like it. Wherever you're at in the world, you're going to have a card. Wherever you're at in the world, you're going to have a card. You get your hair cut free, and then they do it. It's a black card. I appreciate y'all, man. That's so yeah, amazing. So, I That's what that. I need. so, so we have this part of the show that we do. We call credit check. Okay, um, you've Every. done very well at it already by now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because what did Joe say? Uh, what did Joe say? Uh, credit. People give you your people give you your flowers because well, they don't want to give, give you your credit. credit. I don't want no flowers. Wow. I want my credit. I want my fucking credit. Because my Give credit, my credit, I can leverage. My flowers, <laughs> wow. I just got to put that shit to look pretty. I don't want my flowers. Give my fucking I credit. I love that concept. So we have. To, thank you, brother. So love we have a, 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 a segment where we call Credit Check, where we want you to give a shout out to two or three unsung heroes in it's your too career. Many. It's too many. Unsung heroes? It's too many. Like a school teacher or somebody you just want to <laughs> shout out. Um, this ain't. This, by the way, this is like somebody who's like sitting down telling their kids, "I help Brian Michael Cox." Well, I, I mean, I'm going to start. I'm going to start with Greg Curtis. Okay, off, Greg off Curtis. Rip. Uh, Greg Curtis Senior is somebody who took me in as a youngin, who actually showed me the ropes of producing records. Um, he's a Houston native. 
a Houston legend. Mm. Um, and he wrote Just a Prayer Away for uh, Yolanda Adams, but he also mm. wrote Love for Keisha Cole. Oh, wow. Like, this guy is uh, probably the most important person in my development as a producer. Mm. He's the person that actually was like, that said, hey, fuck being an artist, bro. You are a songwriter. You are a producer. You're going to make more money in that space. Mm. And showed it to me. Gave me mm-hmm. keys to the studio. Mm. Gave me, let me, let me really, like, touch the equipment and, and build whatever that whatever mm. that foundation was. That's the foundation I came to Atlanta with. That's amazing. See, Greg you know Curtis, mean? man. We know about Noonie, so, Chris Hicks, JD, but Greg Curtis. I have Curtis, to give man. Greg, Greg Curtis Greg. his props. I like that. And Greg Curtis is still outside. He's still out here making <laughs> dope shit. He's working with Omarion. He's working with Polo. Like, he's still out oh, here wow. doing his thing. Okay, good. Um, it. Um, but he's an amazing, he's one of the most, um, he, I mean, you understand, Greg Curtis in Houston is a legend. Mm. And not just me saying he's a legend. He's a legend at the crib, mm. period. Like, from a keyboard player, piano player, organ player, composer, producer, he's a legend at the crib already. Mm. Like he, he reached the threshold of what Houston could give. And then branched out after. But and he, but, and he threw the rope down and gave you a shot, which no, most people don't have to do. And, and didn't give me no wild deal. Was like, oh, you got a sign to me. No, he was like, you my son. Mm. And he took me in. That's and deal. didn't, and did, and Greg ain't made a dollar off me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Money but he money. literally, but what he, what he will always get from me is my respect and my love. And mm. I'm always show love to his but family. That also gives, that also gives us, uh, uh, an example of why you are who you are. Yeah. So humble, because if your teacher is so fucking selfless and humble and yeah, giving, then you had no choice. Result. The nigga didn't like. He could have easily been like, "Yo, Pam, like my mom, Pam, you know, sign him. You know, I got. I want to sign him. I'm, I'm doing." Like that nigga never shoved no paperwork in my mama's face. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like never did anything foul. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That nigga was he is, he, he is our family. My I'm a, mom I'm, by the way, him. I'm gonna I'm edit this clip up and send it to you to share with him because yeah. he should. No, nah, like, dope. like literally, he is the reason why I was able to make the deals I was able to make mm-hmm. down the line. That's amazing because I felt like, well, if Greg, if I didn't give it to Greg, I'm not giving it to you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like that was the it, way that that's, that that I was moved. How you, that's it was like amazing. If I'm gonna if I want to give it to anybody, I I give it you to him. Gotta help me, cause this nigga actually brought me to his house with his kids and his wife, and like I don't know y'all niggas. Mm-hmm. I'm not giving it to y'all. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you got to earn it. Cause so I was able to not even understand the business properly. Yeah, I didn't really understand the bit. I just knew that if I was gonna give it to somebody, I would rather give it to him. Exactly, because. Him, Lisa, his wife, his kids, I was a part of their thing. You know what I mean? So I would rather give it, if I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it to them. For sure. Love so that. if he was like, nah, nigga, this is yours. Mm. So when I got into the world, I'm like, well, I'm not giving it to y'all because I'm going to have to <laughs> give it to him. And y'all ain't do nothing he did for me. He did everything for me. Exactly. You know what I'm That's saying? Dope. So, so can you give me one more? Um, or two more, your choice. I'll give you a few. Um, unsung. Um, I, I mentioned him earlier, a guy named Teron Mitchell. Okay. Um, in Houston, he's known as OG Eddie Kane. <laughs> um, Sound like an OG. But, and we've had some some problems mm-hmm. throughout the years. Okay. But, That's good, though. You still That's get honorable, credit, though. But yeah. Um, he's somebody who saw it in me early and he was signed to Atlantic records. He was signed, he was in a group called Groovy and they were signed to Atlantic. And the reason why I know Greg Curtis is because of him. Mm, wow. Um, I went to school with his sister and we were all friends and, you know, he's a, he's a person that really poured into me early mm. on. Um, early, early on. And he saw it in me and was like, yo, this kid got something. Yeah. So it's always something when you're a kid and somebody says, this kid has something. Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. You know what I mean? That's for real. It's always something when you're under 17, 16, 15, and somebody's like, yo, this kid is talented. Mm. I want to work with this kid, and I'm going to start writing with this kid. And this guy was going to New York and working with Donnell Jones and Untouchables and bringing back demos from, you know, from, you know, I'm like, Kenny Smooth. And I'm like, this guy is crazy. Mm. Like, this shit is crazy. Yeah. Hearing the music. <laughs> You understand, like you're making music, in, I'm making music in my room, but when you hear, you know, Troy Taylor Productions, mm-hmm. um, Donnell Jones Productions, Kenny Smooth Productions, you're hearing things, this is the mid to late 90s, when these guys are at the top of their game. Yeah. Um, there's something about what that, the inspiration of that, mm-hmm. that makes you say, yo, I know I can do that. Mm. How do I get there? Yeah. And T um, was the person that really made it like, like we talk about how Beyonce and Destiny Child made it real for me, but as a producer and a songwriter, he made it real for me because he was so dope. He would come back with these skills and these different cadences we make songs. I'm like, damn, this shit hard. This shit dope. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's how. Right. How'd you come up with that? Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. And he would say, "Yo, well, when I was in the studio with you know, Jannar Parker, when I was in the studio with you know, this one or that one, I'm like, damn, you were in New York. You was really going to, and he would go to the, he was going to like you know, Ashton Simpson had like the club up there. They do the yeah. open mic. Yeah. So they go up to the open mic. Yeah, I went to open mic at so and so and so, and I went to da 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 da, and I saw this one and that one, and blah blah blah. And he would just give us these experiences, and that was like a window. Mm. You know what I mean? To like, oh, it's possible. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even if I don't live it right now, it's actually possible mm-hmm. that this can happen. Right. I love that. So I, I got to give it up to Greg Curtis and I give it to Ron Mitchell, a.k.a. OG Eddie Kane. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's who he goes by right now. I got to I got to do that because yeah. I know if you guys tag him, I want to make sure that he gets the right For tag. Sure, we will. Um, and then. I think that some of my great unsung heroes and it's amazing for me to even be in communication with them the way that I am is Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Good one. I feel like everybody gives it up to everybody else. You know, you know, Teddy's Teddy's the reason why I produce records, so Teddy's my dude. You know, we give it to Teddy because Teddy, yeah, it's Teddy. Yeah, he was in a group. He was, he was in groups. He, they made, you know what I mean? Groups. Um, I think people give it to Babyface because Babyface, he was an artist. Yeah, if, if, Teddy, if, if, if Teddy, famous, Teddy, and Kenny were artists. Yeah, you know what I mean? Jimmy and Terry were just producers, man. Mm. It was just songwriters. They didn't make albums. They did. They weren't artists. I mean, they were in the time, but yeah, nobody it was knew. The scenes, yeah, it was Prince and Morris. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, Jimmy and Terry were just producers. Mm. It just made records. Mm. Made very, very important records. You know what I mean? Yeah. And important albums. 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 Yeah, like I mean, you. Gotta, I'm talking I mean, from the SOS band to. New Ushers, edition, can you stand the to rain? Usher, to Usher, to, you remind me, like to Bad Girl, to what? they did back. I didn't know. I, yeah, they did do Bad Girl. You know, I just think that Jimmy and Terry, even though we do celebrate them, they don't get enough. It's not enough because L.A. Because Bay it's Bay not Bay 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 L.A. L.A. went on the run. L.A. Bayface, L.A. told me himself out of his mouth, like we wanted to be them. Yeah, that's dope. They didn't want to be Kashif. They didn't want to be Leon Silvers. They, they wanted to be Jimmy and Terry, they did which is why job. they came to L.A. They they found them, was like, put us on with Clarence Avon. I would say like, Clarence Avon, yep. L.A. and Kenny was following Jimmy and Terry. Yeah. That in itself says everything you need to know. About who they are. About who Jimmy well, and Terry I mean, are. And not only that, like I said, they did albums. It's hard to say. Like, it's hard to be. Entire. Uh, it's hard to be a producer. And not From just the albums. Classic from album. the beginning, from the beginning, classic. Be classic. Beginning. Like you know, some people could do albums and yeah. it might not be good, but classic. But I'm telling you, I was tell like me and Jermaine, and it, not just me and Jermaine. I'm gonna just take Jermaine. I think Jermaine, that's the 
pedigree he follows mm-hmm. with his collaborators. Sure. Right? I feel like that's why he, with me and him, is different because I leaned in versus mm-hmm. a lot of the collaborators would take. Mm. Okay, well, okay, well, I got my couple hit records, so I'm about to go. Try to be my own see, man. Like, <laughs> Try to be my own JD. I was always my own thing. Yeah, but you, because but you had, but, that's, but that comes from a confidence in who you were yeah. as a man. Mm-hmm. But I but I also always respected my relationship with him and I always understood that we both had the same amount of love for the process and also the same amount of love for Jimmy and Terry. Like we love Jimmy and Terry. So when we approach records, we really approach records like Jimmy and Terry. Yes. Like I'm like, okay, cool. If you're doing, you're going to do the majority of the writing, I'm going to do the majority of the comp- composition, and then you do the drums, and I'll do, like, I don't know if there's a, outside of the Neptunes, and me and Jermaine were never officially a partner. Like, I could go, like, uh, which is, like it was never like B. Cox and Jay. Yeah, it was never like an official yeah. thing, which is, we just who we are, who we are you guys to were each like, other. You guys weren't the Avengers. You was Batman and Superman. And y'all just, y'all just collabed. Came all together. Like they, I like that. Yeah, y'all just came together. Like, yo, together. We're not joining the hip. Jermaine yeah. made a lot of records with L Rock. and made yeah. a lot of hits with him. Made a lot of hits with Manuel. He's working with a new guy that he's working with that when I'm like moving around and they're making joints together and I'm making, you know what I mean? I made joints with Kendrick and Adonis. And, mm-hmm. But when it's something special about what we do together, mm-hmm. It's unsaid. It's un. We don't have to talk about it. This is what it is. You know what I mean? So, we Tamara usually ends with the last question. I'm gonna leave it to her. All right. So you okay. are on the God Show, which is an acronym for Go to Underdog. So I have to ask you: Do you consider yourself a goat or underdog in this industry, and why? I've never looked at myself as a goat. People say that a lot. I say it. Um, I've always looked at myself as a person who was an underdog. Um, just because I've always worked from that vantage point, and it's kind of like like my man, like my man Sean Garrett, right? I feel like I don't, I'm, I'm not that intense with it, but, <laughs> but 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 I feel like for Sean, it's the same thing. It's like we have to have a little bit of a chip. You have to. A chip on the a little bit, A little bit of a chip on our shoulder. Mm-hmm. If everything is going right and it feels perfect, it's wrong. <laughs> and trust me. How many, <laughs> times I've, how many times I've had conversations with Sean and I'm like, Sean, it's going great for you. What are you doing? No, oh, damn, my niggas ain't fucking with me. I'm like, what are you talking about, brother? You have three number one records. Like, what are you, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm talking them through. But it's like, as the years go by, I realize, oh, what it is is that Sean needs to chip. And chip drives him. For me, not as intense as he does. I'm good. <laughs> but but you still need the it. chip is the chip motivates you. It's still necessary. When you are when you have a little chip on shoulder, when niggas think that I'm soft, when niggas think that I'm humble, well fuck humble, I'm it's humility. Me even saying that, that's yeah. the chip. That's my chip. Yeah. My chip is not like trying to make niggas buy a record or make niggas feel like the direction should be number one. My chip is like, y'all know what I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've proven it over and over again. Mm-hmm. So don't call me humble. Yes. My chip is, is humility. Don't call me nice. I'm good. Ooh. Right? Because nice guys finish last. Right. Say that again. Good guys finish first. Mm. Every time. Good people, good hearted people, good fucking people. Y'all gotta stop. Finish first. Nice people get stepped on, trampled on, taken advantage mm. of. I can't. So, that, like, good that, morals, that, by the not way, necessarily. Humble nice people be. get taken mm. advantage of, stepped on. That's mine. Humble and nice to me is synonymous. Right. Humility and good is different. they like cousins. I, in my opinion. At that it's moment, just, I got to drop the mic. <laughs> Shout out to our sponsors, Yoko Vodka, Toten Carey. Thank you so much for uh, coming the by. Cut. And if you're in Atlanta on Wednesday night, come to Ladies of R&B Please at Red come. Martini. I want a residence there. That's how hard Hold that's on, how me and my man Keith Thomas got it popping every Wednesday. 
Don't and, go if and, you got to speak listen, on the mic the next day. And that day, would be the only time you see Brian Michael Cox free. Free. <laughs> Absolutely. He's on. He's DJing. He's on the mic. He's and talking shit. Drinking. He's partying. He's no dancing. better vibe. It is, it no is. better vibe. It's free. But those, and I also want to say something too. Like, you know, I'm I'm working with Love Renaissance. I'm seeing VP and mm-hmm. I know that partner shit. with the company. People. You know, we have a bunch of things coming out. Ayana, Sad Boy. We got a new Summer Walker project coming okay. out. But I also have a company illustrating new ideas that I'm launching myself. I have an artist by the name of Jack Freeman. We put a single out this past Friday called Shine. I need y'all to fuck with that. Listen, I'm we just, gonna, you Jack, know. Gonna, I'm going to end it with a snippet of the song. If that's can we do that? You got yeah, you send them, send them a song. Yeah, send me a song. Yeah, <laughs> end it with a clip. Because for me, it's like, I definitely put it. Just end it with a clip of the song at the end. But, bro, I just want to tell you, I appreciate you. We are Ray, calling thank you, you a goat. You Ray. definitely Ray. are. No, no, let me tell you Ray, let me no tell you something, man. I, I want y'all to understand. I want y'all to understand. This is a personal thing with me and Ray. Ray is, from the day that we met, we've always been tight. Mm-hmm. And Ray always included me in whatever they was doing. Period. You know what I mean? No, I swear to God. Like my first time going to the Virgin Islands, we were Ray. Oh. Ray got the government to pay for us to come. <laughs> me and my baby mama. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we had a good time. We're going to do it again, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. My we're baby gonna, mama not coming. Go we coming. <laughs> hey, that's a slide. I mean, that's different. Slide my baby mama married. Big love to her. Yeah. And then she's not coming for somebody. I'm bringing somebody else. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but Ray, you know, we did, the. I think the very first thing we did together was Kelly Rowland. Yep. And I I was like, yo, I called. I was like, yo, man, I, I, I need the guys to come down. I was like, I'm, you know, I was... In a, like a like a tight spot, and I was like, "Damn, I want Rock City to come." And I called Ray, and Ray brought them down. It happened. And we did like three or four songs like the day. And I remember being like, "Cause I didn't really i I knew how good they were, right? That's why I called." But when we had that moment, I was like, "Oh, oh these niggas is ill." Yeah. yeah. Like it was like a. Okay, yeah. can y'all come it, back it, tomorrow? It's, it's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, can we come back? Like, it was like a thing. Like, oh, like. It was my, you know, and, and you know, Teron and Timmy, we all connected. We all, we really clicked really well yeah. early. And I just really admired how Ray moved them around. And when you call Ray, they were available. He was available. And Ray was like, okay, Cox, I'm bringing them down. Fuck it. Where you at? I'm at so-and-so. Okay, nigga. Hey, be Cox at so-and-so, so-and-so. And they would pull up and we'd make records and, and I just got to know them and got to build with them and build a beautiful relationship with them. And, um, you know, Ray, man, you're my brother, man, for life. I just want Amen. you to understand that. You know this won't I mean? be the first time we drag you on the couch. By the, by the way, guys. by the way, we got to do, we got to, I, I got some things I want to do with B and Keith just because I feel like they own the R&B space. Yeah. And I want to, and for me, the one thing I feel is that a lot of my friends, we don't see ourselves as superheroes. Yeah. Ain't. You don't understand that you said something, and I just want to end it here. Is you said, nice guys finish last, but good guys always win. Yeah. And you were probably the most, you and and Jazzy, but Jazzy was a little, Jazzy's my nigga, Jazzy bro. was a little surrounded I by. I was understand. You understand what I'm trying to say? But it was, just so we, real, real, real quick, I just want to say something about Jazzy Faye. Jazzy is the reason why I'm here. Mm. No, I know. I don't want anybody to ever get that fucked up. Jazzy's the one that said, Noni, that guy, get him. Take him. Mm. Put you in the game. You don't understand yet, but get him. He's so right. mm. That guy is going to work harder for everybody in this building. Mm. Get him. Sounds jazzy. And to this day, I don't, I don't, any, Jazzy Faker call me for any Same here. Thing, bro. Anyone. That is my brother. Nobody can't tell me shit by failing Alexander or his daddy <laughs> or his mama. <laughs> To my okay. people, my mama called me like, "We're failing at." Exactly, uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Jazzy is that dude. It's a good fucking dude, bro. I, I, I just think, man, Atlanta is a special place, man, because it guys is. like you, guys like Jazzy, you can when you came to the city, if you knew the right parts of town to be on, yeah, you would see Jazzy in his blue Lexus. Yeah, you would see Brian in his black in Mercedes truck. Oh. No, yeah. no, the, I don't the, know about early. The, the, when the Bentley truck came. Before the Bentley. Before when the, the Bentley, Bentley. When the Bentley came, the car was came. Lately. We all knew who he was ready that dude, but it I'm saying late. the black Mercedes the, the truck. truck. The truck you know I had. Like you would yeah. see him out and about, and when you see those guys, you like, damn, I could do this shit. Like yeah. the fact, 
the, the ability to touch it makes it real. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you one of the people that made it real for us. I'm saying now you are a GOAT. Because I don't even want to <laughs> sit with nobody who is not considered a GOAT. I appreciate you. We celebrate you, you. We appreciate you. Appreciate you. And this was to honor you because you're my brother, but you also are a great person. And if you're listening right now, he's an AR at LVRN. Fuck with him. Yeah. Surround him. Like that's how we got to do each other. Yeah. And this is the God Show, and we, we are, are out. out. We are out.